listen to me, motherfucker. I'm talking, 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 talking. I say horrible things sometimes because I think they're funny. My, my podcast is a verbal mosh pit because it's just me pinwheeling around. You don't know where the fuck I'm going to wind up, and I, I generally have no idea what's, when it's going to end or start. I'm responsible for this whole goddamn thing. I want a little respect from you people. Hey, what's happening, Mike Schmidt, 40-year-old boy podcast? I got a weird signal there from Lily. That was odd. She came, in with, she came underneath. She gave me the underground hammer. Uh, which I, I assume is a finger in the ass, right? That's what a fun, that's got to be an underground hammer. Because there was uh, there's a movie I forget is a bachelor party where he's negotiating with a chick and she's like, uh, yeah, you can get a, a pogo throw with an underground hammer. And I and I in my brain, even as a fucking youth, even as like a like a 13 year old, I went, oh, that's a finger in the ass. I mean, I don't know why I I copped that immediately, but uh, it was because of my many years of reading porn as a child to the youths of the neighborhood. Uh, folks are familiar with that story. Anybody who's new, you don't know it. Uh, when I was a kid, I could read from a really young age. Like when I was, I was two, I could read, uh, and not just read like, you know, the quick brown fox jumped over the fucking book. No, I could actually read like the newspaper and, and, and I knew words. I might not have known what they meant, but for some reason, the Lord blessed me with an ability to, uh, sound out words and read them and read them properly. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't know if you, uh, this, this may blow your mind. Hold on. Uh, I'm reading the show right now from a script. You have no idea. See, that seems odd, doesn't it? How, how can he read so quickly? How can he be so far ahead of himself and not know exactly how he's going to trip over himself? But no, I can go ahead and read right there. All of that was written down. Everything I just said was written down. This is written down. Yeah, that's right. This fucking, this, this show is circuitous, God damn it. All right. Uh, hi, folks. I'm Mike Schmidt. I'm the host of this show. I'm good. Uh, sort of. Getting fatter every day. That's not good. Oh, it's terrible. Uh, some guy posted on my Facebook page that I was look, he look, I looked thinner, and I'm like, I, dude, I don't know. No, I, I appreciate the thought, but uh, it, you know what? I only looked thinner because in that picture, there were guys behind me holding dozens of donuts, and I wasn't looking at them. So maybe he thought, oh, that's what constitutes thinner, is that I'm not hungrily eyeing them down like a wolf on the run. Who's going to take them? Because you know wolves love donuts, folks. I think we all know that, right? That's, uh, we're all aware of that. If you ever go to a Winchell's, and you're, you need to look both ways when you walk out, because there are roving packs of cake donut loving wolves. That's right, cake donuts. They do not like a puffy glazed. <laughs> Fuck that. Wolves are very particular about the donuts they like. And if you got cake donuts, you're fucking going down. Uh, look it up. The Entenmans, a family of bakers, were also well-known wolf hunters. Back, that's their history. <laughs> Way back in the 1700s, when Entenmann's first established themselves as a bakery, they were constantly attacked by wolves. They were besieged by wolves. And they had to dress up like Van Helsing and kill all the wolves in the area just so they could make delicious treats for all the peasants. Uh, peasants couldn't afford donuts. They made treats for royalty. And let's be honest. The Entenmann's Baking Company, they do not want to be affiliated with pe peasants in any way. All right? Let's back off. All right. Um... Now I'm going to get an angry letter from Entenmann's. What if I, well, I'm, you know, that's what this show is going to be. Every time I say something, I'm going to say I'm going to get an angry letter from an entity that would never write me a letter. I would love to get something on Entenmann's stationery. Dear sir! Is, and then they draw a picture of themselves with their monocle falling out and donut crumbs. All right. Uh, that's the Entenmann's family. They, look, I, I know they're fancy because I see their script on the, uh, on the box. That handheld, crazy blue Entenmann, uh, and that's like, a, don't think I don't start salivating to see I see a fucking box of frosted donuts, not just frosted donuts. Here's, here's how I know how they were uh, landowning gentry back in the day. They serve rich frosted donuts. They're not happy just selling you frosted donuts. Read their goddamn box. Rich frosted donuts. Scatter, peasants. Don't even think of looking twice at this box of Entenmann's donuts. It's not for you. Our donuts are solely for the wealthy despite their presence at Ralph's. All right. Uh, Entenmann's, too. They, they, and they used to have a fuck you fat guy donut that, like, I don't know what happened to it. It was a, uh, they they somehow, and somehow, I'm, look, I don't want to give away Entenmann's secrets. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm not even rich enough to be talking about them. Again, I'm going to be getting very angry stationery on gold leaf written calligraphically. Dear sir, never, you, you, before you even think about putting our product in your mouth, don't even have our name in your mouth. You are not wealthy enough to speak of our doings. All right, so uh, they used to have a donut with jelly, a chocolate donut with jelly in it. It was a rich frosted donut that they had somehow uh, taken a hypodermic and squeezed some fucking jelly into. And I bought them once, and I remember e and eating them then. I I felt like a, a wealthy land baron. I mean, because it's like, 
holy shit, you've given me two donuts in one. It, it was just, I, it made no sense. I, I, everything was upside down at that point. My life made no sense. I had, I did not know what to do with myself. When you bite into a chocolate donut and then your mouth fills with uh, comforting jelly. Oh my Lord. Uh, and by the way, please don't confuse donut comforting jelly with other comforting jelly. That comforting jelly, please do not put it in your mouth. If it accidentally gets in your mouth during all of the rovings with your with your tongue, that's fine. If it happens, good. Uh, although, you ever get that tasty lube, that stuff, that stuff that tastes... Don't shake your head. I know you have. I've gotten it from you. No, it doesn't taste good at all. You got it from me. You, you had that box of, uh, of that whore bag. She uh, literally used to have a whore bag in her house that I don't know where it came from, but it was literally like a, a gigantic plastic pillowcase filled with condoms and lube. Uh, it, it was like if Santa came to your house on, on you know, Christmas fuck day, you know, and, and he would just <laughs> scatter it amongst everybody. It, it, let's put it, it would be from, it looked like something someone would have at like the gay pride parade and he would just throw them into the crowd. Like, you know, how you, any normal parade, you get Tootsie Rolls thrown to you or, or something like that. I wouldn't know. I've never been to a fucking parade. Do they throw candy at you? I have no idea. That seems... That doesn't seem right. If you go to a parade to support them, they're throwing things at you. I don't want to get a tootsie roll in the eye and get escorted to the fucking hospital. That's weak. I just want to see the, the fucking JCs hold hands. That's all I want to see. But instead, I got to show up and get a handful of candy blasting me in my mug. I got to I fucking uh, Hershey's kiss because they're pointing on the end. That'll go right in your fucking eye and blind a guy. That's not good. And then you know what you need? A monocle. And then you're making donuts for the rich. Uh, yeah, I don't don't throw candy at me, folks. Uh, at a parade or otherwise, <laughs> and other, otherwise, <laughs> because that happens a lot. I, I'm often recognized in public, and people will run to one of those vending machines and buy a handful of Skittles and just whip it at me. <laughs> Nobody likes fruit-flavored buckshot in the face, folks. God damn it, that hurts. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that hurts. It's a little-known fact that Dick Cheney's gun was full of Skittles when he shot that dude in the face. Because it adds, it adds insult to injury. Because you know why? If you get shot in the face with buckshot, you're like, fuck, that's awful, I just got shot in the face. But if you get shot in the face with Skittles... You're confused because you're supposed to put Skittles in your face anyway and eat them. But they just came at you at high velocity, and then you're mad at yourself. You didn't catch them. You're like, you know what? That's on me. Seriously. <laughs> Skittles are edible. I should open my mouth and caught them all. But no, instead I got a fucking, you know, my I look like Elmer Fudd in a cartoon after shit blew up in his face. Skittles in my hair. Weak. Oh, folks. Lily lives in Hollywood. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about the neighborhood where Lily lives. First of all, I'll tell you this. I got a ticket last week at Lily's house because I parked in a loading zone. Because I thought, uh, uh, you know, I saw a loading zone and I've parked there four different times or three different times coming into last week. And never a ticket, never a peep. Nobody said anything mean to me, not a cross eye. Uh, and then last week I come downstairs, ticket out my window, 55 bucks. Dude, I went in the hole on last week's show. God damn it. That's a guy gene and then some. That's a guy jean and don't and a, and a t-shirt like or a mug. I think mugs are fifteen. Holy God! I forget, folks. I never go to the Zazzle store because neither do you. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, but that's I lost that at last week's show. Holy crap, that was awful. I hate crap. Why do I say crap? I hate that word. Uh, but you know what, folks? It's in the script. I had to read it. It's right there. I don't know. I, I again, I write the script. You would think that I wouldn't put it in there. I hate the goddamn word. But yet, for some reason, every week, inevitably, crap finds its way into the script because I, I'm tiring of finding ways to say shit. All right. Uh, what do you say? You can't say pudding. That's awful. That just gives you the creeps and makes everybody get goose flesh. I don't want that, right? Uh, by the way, have you ever had goose flesh? Delicious. All right. Um, I've never eaten goose, I don't think. Have you ever eaten goose? Yes. That's our friend Lily Von Stuff. She has eaten goose. Uh, for a, a special occasion like a Christmas or just, uh, okay. Or were you, <laughs> you wrestled one of the crowd and cooked it on a spit in your hobo Thanksgiving. Oh, oh my God. You went, th <laughs> that's nasty. Oh, she just made like a, uh, it, she acted like she was performing a sex act on a goose, which is not good. And a lady goose at that. She didn't, she was not bothering or trifling with any sort of male goose, which would be, what are they called? Gary, right? No, no, no Garfield. Garfield goose. Yes, that's what it is. Garfield goose was a puppet in Chicago. Uh, and now I picture Lily blowing a puppet. Fantastic. And actually in this house, that's a possibility. I look around, pictures of fucking Flash and Shazam and a fucking uh, weird Lego of Lily and, uh, you know, who knows what's going to wind up in her mouth. Who knows what in this house has a cock and what and when they're going to put it in her mouth. I have no idea when I look around. A lot of stuff here. All right, so. Uh, so I got a ticket last week. What else was I talking about? There was something I was going to point out. There was something I had that was uh, uh, a definite. You said, let me tell you about Hollywood. Holly, that's what it was. Let me tell you about the neighborhood. Folks, Lily lives in a, she lives behind a place, she lives behind a, I, I can't be specific, because uh, I gave sort of clues once, and a guy sent me a Google Maps picture of Lily's apartment building. Did I mention that on here? I, I, I was naked in the window. 
Oh, yeah, with, with a puppet cock in her mouth. It was horrendous. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I can't, so I won't say where it is, but it's in Hollywood, and it's one of the oldest buildings in the history of Hollywood. But it's you've got to go down like weird roads to get here. You can either turn uh, into it from a main road, or there's a back way uh, off of Hollywood Boulevard. I don't want to say where. So uh, I I took the back way today, and uh, I will tell you by down by Lily's house when I pulled up, there was a cop motorcycle cop and he was hashing out some things with eight people uh some latinos were having a discussion and he decided to pull up and he's got his notepad out and there's like a group of four just pacing in circles and then he's talking to the other couple and then there's two more people by the bike so there's eight people and they're in the midst of some huge argument and he's trying to mediate it and uh this was uh, i had come down the sneaky side street and i emerged to find this you know gang discussion with this cop on a motorcycle and he looked very busy he looked so busy that I thought to myself, hmm, I think he's probably too busy to do anything about the guy who's waving his cock at people 30 yards up to Sneaky Street. I, I think, <laughs> as much as I think that deserves police attention, I got to think that he's handling these eight people. Because when I saw the cop motorcycle, I'm like, oh, I, I, because here's, sure enough, I came down the Sneaky Street down, uh, uh, it's, it's, named, it's named after a fruit. There's a fruit street, and then you turn right down a like a little alley, and it, it's kind of it's swervy, like an S-curve. So I went in the bottom of the S, and then as I came around the other side of the S, there's just a guy waving his cock at people. Just, uh, and I don't even think he was jerking off. Like, I mean, I, I think it's literally just like, hello. Like, he's just, like, waving it like a pom-pom. He's cheerleading. He's excited. You know what? He's he's at a, uh, like, a naked NASCAR. That's where he's at. And as you go down the crazy S-curve, he's just excited by the vrooming of your engine, and then... Sure enough, he's just uh, fucking waving his tackle at everybody that came out down the fucking S-curve. And uh, I, what do you do? What do you do at that point? I, do you see enough of it where you just you just shine it? You know what I mean? Say it again? You, oh, you wave back? Yeah. How you doing? If I wasn't driving, maybe I would have. Maybe I. Maybe he saw a kindred spirit. He was like, hey, I, you know, I heard a story about you. Oh, really? Uh but yeah, he's just just a guy leaning up against the wall. It wasn't even like doing a crazy dance or anything. He he looked like um, a gunfighter, like a dude in a, those old Western movies. They're like leaning up against the wall with their hat tipped down low over their brim. And he was just leaning and he just had his dick out and he was just kind of jangling it. He wasn't stroking it. He was just kind of like, it was like he was fishing. He was looking for a bite. You know what I mean? He, he'd cast it out and you know how you jerk your rod a couple of times to see if there's a fish on the end of the line? That's what this guy's doing. And, uh, and he snagged me. I'm not going to lie to you. I had a hook in my mouth as I turned around and went, great, that's that's pleasant. And then I came around the corner and there's the cop and I wanted to go, literally 30 yards away, I wanted to go, dude, do me a favor. I, I understand they're having a thing, but just drive up there and, and pinch fucking Captain Ball hands. Can you take him in? Because uh, th this is a well-traveled thoroughfare, even though it's a sneaky street. And you got to think some chick's going to happen by into Rape Alley. That's not good. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, Rape Alley. That's where. That's how you get to Lily's house. You go down Rape Alley, and uh, you know, look for the people with crumbs in their mouth. All right. So, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I'm just because, uh, and I guess, I mean, it's bad that you're used to it. I mean, I shouldn't be used to it, right? I shouldn't be used to seeing guys just pulling their cock out and waving it around. I mean, but it, you just do that thing where you just go, Ugh, you know. And I'll tell you, that's a thing online. I, I, I mean, I think I talked about it on here where there's like. Because there was a guy, all right, a guy in New York pulled his cock out and uh, and was waving it at some girl on the subway, and they were and someone was filming it, and she lost her mind. Like she, she started screaming at the guy. She goes, "No, he's pulling his dick out. He had his dick out. I want a cop. I want a cop right now." And the guy's like, "What?" And, they, and he had, he didn't have time to zip up before she started screaming, so he had pulled his shirt down. And they're like, "Let's see. Well, let's see." And and he was like, "No, I'm fine." And he tried to walk away. She goes, "You're not going anywhere. As soon as this fucking train stops, I'm getting a cop." Like she lost her mind, and it went viral. It was a big clip. Um, so I read the story about it, and then as I scrolled down, they were saying, you know, this is this is a subset of internet people. Flashers now, not they're not just content to flash people, but they film it. <laughs> they fucking film it, and they put it online. Like, I talked about the maid guys, right? I think I talked about that on here. Guys jerking off, waiting for the maid to show up, and filming it, and then putting it on the internet. Man, I just, I don't, what the fuck? What is wrong with people? And then I found, like, as I followed that story, they're like, you can go here, and it's it's terrifying. And it's all these stories. Of course I did. Why wouldn't I go there? To go here, it's terrifying. Done. Click. I have to look for terrifying. Come on, that's a great word. You say something's terrifying, I'm in. So uh, I click on it, and it's a message board, a forum message board of flashers. Guys who recount their stories 
of uh, you know doing it at the gym or doing it at schools or doing it wherever and just talking about uh, the excitement they got from it. And and it's so funny they live all of these guys because flashing to me is a uh, is very much a look at me enterprise. Okay, <laughs> it is not I guess literally when you think about it, but it is it is never about the other person. OK, it is just about you showing your dick to people and running away, because uh, if you wanted any sort of personal contact, you'd go buy somebody a scotch and soda and, and say, hey, let's dance. You know what I mean? Then you get close and then you can pull your dick out of the dance floor and see what happens then. But uh, but with these people, they just want to they're like, yeah. And then they get a sex thing from it and they run away. But in this col- in, when you read it, all of them dream of the day somebody like approaches them and participates like that uh, according to what they write uh you know because they all the fact that they're being seen that they're being watched is the greatest thing in the world for them like they'll they'll you know they'll write about it in these loving terms that you would think fucking thoreau was writing about the woods (laughs) these guys are like oh uh, and they tell these bullshit stories and then they all of them are all like oh yeah that's a great story well it's bullshit it didn't happen that didn't fucking happen some guy told a story about being in a gym and uh and it was late and he was the only guy in there and there was another man and uh this man was in the shower and he was getting dressed but he was completely naked and the man's wife was yelling in we gotta go we gotta go we gotta hurry up come on what are you doing in there and then she just walked in mad stormed through and started yelling at her husband in the shower and this guy was like you know he was inadvertently caught naked but of course he wasn't going to get dressed and uh, then the woman on her way out like stopped and looked like you know and gave me the once over and kind of like slowly walked out of the locker room and all the guys are like that's awesome that's so awesome like that never happened in a million fucking years ever dude and and they should just instead of calling it flash central or whatever the fuck they call it they should just call it the pre-rape chronicles because that's what all of these guys are that's who all of these dudes are all of these guys are just absolute sexual predators waiting for the balls to cross the line you know what i mean they they'll jerk off in a car i've seen these clips you'll see them on fucking x tube and red tube and fucking uh you know motherless.com and it's du- a dude sitting in a car and he's just fucking jerking off and and he's filming it and a girl will walk by and like look in the window and just she'll keep walking, of course. And and uh, th- then that's it. That's the clip. It's like 15 seconds. But they're like, oh, it was so great that when she looked, I'm like, oh, you are so lonely. How lonely are these fucking dudes? There, there's guys who jerk off on like rental car vans or on buses and they film it. They keep the, the iPhone at a level and they're jerking off. And you get so the reason, again, they're all young Spielbergs, if nothing else. Now, they're they're. They're George, they're the young, young George Lucas is with their cocks in their hands, and they're they're holding the phone in their left, holding the cock in their right, and then you are in the picture, you're in the frame down the down the, the bench, so they'll be like jerking it, and you can se- kind of see the woman just looking out the window, and occasionally, uh, a woman will turn and look and just go Ugh, and like and I roll her eyes in disgust, and but they never move. That's the thing that drives me crazy. The women never get up and change seats. So I mean, I guess maybe they got a vibe, or they're interested in it, or I, I, they're not interested, or they're just petrified because this fucking pre-rapist has a handful of cock five feet away and doesn't care, and is filming it with a goddamn phone. You got to be shitting me, dude. I, if you ever saw that, wouldn't you just beat the guy to death? Wouldn't you just beat the guy to death if you saw a guy in a bus? And then even worse, those are the guys who are like, you know, they they're concerned about lighting and aesthetics, and they have a script and everything else, just like myself. Um, <laughs> But these guys, there's other guys who just fucking blatantly walk on and just show their, show their cock to everybody and film it. And the, you'll see people just like, oh, dude, and they like these girls hide their face on the bus. But then he sits down on the bus. I'm like, how are you not pulling the brake immediately and getting off that goddamn bus? I don't give a shit if I got to go taxi or call a hang glider or what the fuck, a skateboard. I'll pull any store that's close by. I'll buy roller skates and get fucking home. I'd rather get off the bus, teach myself to skate <laughs> and then skate to my house. Then sit there with fucking Johnny Cox a lot. Who the fuck wants to look at that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't get it. Women, do me a favor. Sack up, all right? If you see a guy with his cock out, unless you're going to blow him, take a walk. Get the fuck out of there. Man, oh, man. And, and I, I don't get it. And But these guys post them online, man. They're all into it. And then there's, but there are, I, I saw one clip of a guy. He's just walking through the park with his dick out. And he, there's a girl on a bench. And she watches the whole time. She and she actually gets up and walks like past him and like watches him the, the whole time and then he fucking sh- shoots all over and then she just kind of nods and like leaves and you wonder you're like was that a setup like is she playing did he cast her in his little movie or is she just as weird man there's a lot of lonely weird fucking people out there dude and I drove past one of them on the way to this goddamn show he'll probably be out there when I leave too I'll go up sneaky street he's still up there just fucking chafed cock bleeding you know doesn't care still spinning it holding on to it whatever he's doing. And how come every homeless guy is more well-hung than me? How come that happens? 
Jesus Christ, it's depressing. When you see a homeless guy with a big dick, you're like, God damn it, you're not even going to do anything with it except show it to people. Jesus Christ. Can I magically take it? Can I tag him and get it? Is there something? Some sort of body switch? Some sort of vice versa? Me and Fred Savage and George Reinhold will tackle the guy and all of a sudden I got a bigger dick? We could do that, right? They got powers. They were in a movie. Holy shit. 18 again, one of those movies. Get Dudley Moore and Kirk Cameron. Whoever the fuck was in that movie? The three of us conspire to get me a bigger dick. That's what we need. Oh, Jesus. All right. Um, I spent a lot of time talking about nothing there. All right, so... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's where I got in a loop. Um, but I mean, because I'm sorry, when you see a guy fucking spanking it, he wasn't spanking it, he was just dangling it. He was just like, hey, check this out. He might as well had it under glass. I mean, seriously, it was like, it was on display. It was right by the Ripley's Museum. You got to turn by the Ripley's Museum, and all of a sudden, oh, Ripley's, believe it or not, guess what? Homeless guy with a bigger cock than you. Uh, either that, or he has a, an infant in his pants with his arm dangling out. Uh it was crazy. I mean, I, you know, I, I, and you say you know who the guy is, so I mean, I, you know, you're not, I'm not telling you any secrets. Uh, you, well, you don't know who the guy is. You've seen him. I mean, let's put it that way. It's not like, I'm familiar with that guy. I know, I know him. He's been over for dinner. Uh, we had kielbasa. It's Twu. It's Twu. Haha, that's you. Oh, wrong knee. I'm sorry. I hit you on the wrong knee. Sorry. Uh, and you gotta wonder, I gotta wonder, did it hurt bad? I hope not. All right. I don't know if that's like a uniquely American phenomenon. You know what I mean? Because every time, all these guys in the forum and all these people, it's, and the guys filming themselves with the maids and shit, I mean, they all seem to be American. They all seem to be, you know, those dudes. And like, I, you know, hold on. Did you hear that? I had a Manitou almost crawl out of my throat. Oh my God, that was terrible. All right, folks, I apologize. I should scratch that, right? Shouldn't I? No, let's leave that one in. That happens every week. Folks, I don't know if you know this. I'll be talking sometimes, and then something turns to leap out of my throat. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know what it is? It's my uvula that is so fucking angry that I won't stop talking so quickly. It's just like, God damn it, why are you making us do all this goddamn work? It's a vocal cord that's about to go on strike. He tries to leap out, and he makes that noise. Uh, actually, my uvula would swing out on a vocal cord. It's, it's like, you know, crazy Indiana Jones just wrong right across. Uh, so I apologize for that noise you just heard in your ear, folks. And by, by that noise, I mean the last 20 minutes. I, uh... <laughs> Oh, uh, that you know who's you know who's outraged by that? the Entenmans folks. They're like, oh, pish posh! I can't believe you left that in. Brushing donut crumbs off their lapels, uh, checking their golden watches. All right, so uh, what was they talking about? Was that a uh, I was, is that a uniquely American phenomenon? Because you know, uh, I don't see it happening in Egypt. I mean, I, I'm watching Egypt, you know, 24 hours a day now, and they they have two million people on the street. Not one of them is their dick out. Seriously, I don't. <laughs> Granted, they have more important things in their mind at this point, but you have to think one of them. One of, wouldn't one of them go, this is a pretty good time to get my cock out? I mean, I honestly, I just think that would be, because that not that the ultimate fuck you to the, the Mubarak regime? You're like, dude, you've constantly kept us under your dirty thumb, and now here I am, I'm waving it for everybody to see on Al Jazeera. Boom. That's it. And tie whatever you, you want the new flag to be right there on your cock. Like, just, you know what? The, the new flag could just be a picture of your cock on a flag hanging off of your cock. Oh, my God. That's awesome for you i mean i i don't know if the rest of the two million people are too fond about that being the new flag hey amir did you see the new flag no i have not seen it oh it's jabbar's cock it's great it's right there on the what this does not make sense no it's great we just got to get the other two million people on board but i mean it's it's not bad it's a it's granted it's crudely drawn at this point because we didn't expect this whole revolution thing to pop up let's be it's not like jabbar had had a uh, cock flag on deck waiting for for president mubarak to leave finally i mean uh i'm sure we all had that dream but not all of us went ahead and had a cock flag made up just in case so he had to do it kind of on the fly <laughs> terrible I can't stop watching Egypt. Every, right when I go home, the first thing I do is I pull Al Jazeera up on my on my computer and I watch it. I leave it in the corner as I go and I read uh, all of the Twitter people who are saying how much they don't like a sandwich. <laughs> and then I glance to the right and I see two million people who want to be free of their oppressors. And then I go back to my Twitter and I see people going, oh, you should come in and try our scones. And then I look over to the right and I see all of these people that are getting beaten with rubber hoses in the street so they could be free. And then I glance over to the left and I see people having a question about who's the better uh, comic book hero, Superman or Flash. <laughs> Although I will, I, let me tell you, I speak for the rest of the world, Egypt, when I say this. Can you fucking hurry up? Honestly, I am tired <laughs> of watching it. I don't know what you folks are doing over there. You're all, you know what? You're standing in the street. I mean, now that's all great, but shouldn't you be doing shit? I mean, initially you started burning stuff and knocking people over and then the army showed up. And I understand that gets a little tense. Uh, so you all repeal, you repaired to your quarters and you made your cock flags, but then you came back out two million strong yesterday, which was fantastic. Uh, and then 
I, I, I love the fact that there's like people who are pro Mubarak, but they're not really. They're paid by him to to chant like slogans where they're in favor of him and that people are traitors. I I just love the fact that there's extras in the in a revolution. <laughs> That they went ahead and drove these guys. Because, you know, those fucking guys are like, uh, they don't even like Mubarak either. But it's better than working in the, you know, the fucking pyramid mines or whatever the fuck they have over there. I don't know what those people come up with. The only thing I know that they manufacture in that country is uh, oil and cock flags. That's it. That's the, uh, those are the two main exports of Egypt, uh, as far as I know, uh, which is not going to be good for their economy for whoever comes in afterwards. I can't stop watching it. But I, but I, I must admit, I get that weird thing of, all right, could this fucking happen already? It's so stupid. Like I, you know, when we when the Berlin Wall fell and all that took place, then that, that took place over I think a couple of weeks. It ha- but it, we all thought, oh my god, how crazy fast was that? Because it was something that had lasted fifty years, ended within two weeks, and it, and we weren't watching every single minute of it. But now that I I can I have the adaptability to where I can actually watch from Cairo and see the events, and I see guys sitting around, and I'm just like, dudes, you want to fucking pick up the pace here? I mean, seriously. <laughs> I got I got bad news for you. The revolution is being televised, <laughs> so we can all see that you're sitting on your ass on a sleeping bag in the middle of fucking two million people doing nothing. I mean, honestly, let's march to the uh, you know go go tip over a car or 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 take a poke at somebody. I just don't understand how you people can sit there and let this uh, unfold at its own pace. Fucking bit proactive. God damn it, I got shit to do. I'm, I'm not lying. I'm always frustrated because I'll watch and it's daytime and then it drifts into night and then they're talking about other cities and there's organizations and there's marches and stuff. But then at nightfall happens and I'm like, God damn it, nothing happens at night. Jesus Christ. You wasted another one of my days, Egypt? What the fuck is wrong with you? Because I want shit to happen, damn it. If you're going to have a revolution, fucking pick up the goddamn pace. Hi, this is talk radio host Brian Noonan, and when I'm not berating some caller for disagreeing with me, I'm listening to the 40-year-old boy on the Mike Schmidt Podcasting Network. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's time for Traffic and Weather Together on the 7s. Oh, I'm Vic. And I'm Vinny. And we're the Screw Brothers. Now, we're known for sexy DVDs and special toys, but now we've indulged our culinary side by opening up the House of Filth cafeteria. We got food like this. Breaded cock nuggets. A chili dog. Yeah, it's exactly what you think. Anal beads and gravy. A caramel yam bag. It's a lady pot's breakfast. Two eggs over easy with a taco. Order up a hash cunt. It's the Gaping Reuben. Death by chocolate, dick. Hey, fans of the 40-year-old boy, mention Mike and get a free scoop of blueberry ass. We take care of you below the belt and above the belt at the House of Filth Cafeteria. Remember, it ain't filthy unless it's screw filthy. We now return to the 40-year-old boy. Hey, I want to thank uh, tweakedaudio.com slash 40. They sponsor the show, as you know, uh, uh, during the week. And I want to thank all you folks who have gone ahead and bought uh, earbuds from tweakedaudio.com slash 40. And I want to tell that there's a special deal that I've, I've worked out with them uh, this week. And I think maybe next week. Well, certainly this week. Uh, if you go to tweakedaudio.com slash 40 and you buy a set of earbuds, uh, they will match that with a donation to Egypt. They will send them earbuds uh, that they can wear uh, during the revolution so they don't have to hear people yelling. Uh <laughs> None of this is true. All right. So <laughs> I, I just want, I like the idea of us selling, all of a sudden everybody going, oh, that's a great idea. Let's get on board with tweakedaudio.com slash 40. And then Bruce going, wait, I got to send a bunch of fucking earbuds to Egypt now? That doesn't make any sense. And why would they want it? What if you did? How great would that be, though? All of a sudden you tune on, uh, you know, again, because it won't fucking end. Honestly, people, hop to it with your fucking revolution. Quit sitting around and building campfires. Jesus Christ, change your government. It's only been 80 years. Uh, 80 seems long. How long has Mubarak been the guy? 40 years since Sadat took it in the face. You remember Fong? Oh, Fong, you're going to wind up like Sadat. Now Fong's going to wind up like Mubarak. It's going to get toppled because Fong runs a, an island. All right. Folks, again, if, you, if you're new to the show, you have no idea what I just said. You have no idea who Fong is. You don't know anything about what that meant. Uh, but there, there's still a guy who writes me and he'll be, he'll, he'll include Fong in his email. That's great. Uh, I got, e- I got email this week from a guy. Here's, this is funny. Uh, when I said on my email blast last week, I said something about, I, I mentioned mentioning the show to your clergyman or I, I said something and I go, wait a minute, maybe not your clergyman. That doesn't make any sense. And I got an email from Reverend Stephen, <laughs> and he said, I must tell you that I, I listen to your show and your, your show is suitable for a clergyman. Uh, <laughs> he goes, maybe not all of them, but certainly for me. That's on the website. And then, and then he wrote at the bottom. <laughs> He uh, he signed his name and uh, uh, and he wrote uh, in parentheses he wrote dear God please don't use my last name. 
<laughs> I love the fact that he had invoked the name of his boss to please make sure that I didn't use his name. It's like, hey, come on, man. Your show's good for clergymen. I listen to it. It's great. Reverend Stephen. P- dear God, please don't let anyone know that I listen to your show ever. And little does he know, everyone includes that disclaimer in their emails. I really love your show. Dear God, don't tell anyone. Don't let word get out, please, that I listen to you on my tweakedaudio.com slash 40 earbuds all day long. Oh, I was supposed to be in Chicago this week with the Under the Snow. I would have been melted. They would have found me. I would have been melted. In a bi- I would have been in a big block of ice with tweakedaudio.com earbuds in my ears. They would have been like, I would have at least heard great music while I froze to death. That would have been fun. But yeah, I thought about that. I was supposed to fly out today, actually, and, uh, and wound up postponing it for a month. So uh, good, good. Blame me. Midwest for your horrible storms, uh, and that, that's another thing. Is all these people, I, I contrasting Egypt on Al Jazeera, and these people are starving and running around in the street and yelling at army guys. And I'm reading guys on Twitter going, "Ah, oh, I got to buy a chocolate pie because I'm going to be stuck in the house for the next three days." And uh, they're talking about the run on the grocery stores. They're like, "Oh my God, we had to go." Uh, my one of my friend's wives had to buy. She bought like lunch meat and wine, and I'm like, "Oh my God, is that all right?" <laughs> I'm assuming the lunch meat's for the kids. And you're going to suck back some Chablis to deal with the fucking drifts and the children? Children all hopped up on mortadella and you're knocking back fucking two-fisted wine? Good for you. Uh, I shouldn't judge. I hate fucking Chicago in the in this weather. I love Chicago, but I just, I don't... Dude, fuck all that. And again, I because I've had... I've been there when it's this cold. I, t- I told the story about how I had my hands freeze to a car, right? Did I tell that story? Dude, When I, I've had all sorts of fucked up things happen when I was a kid. One, well, two things. I'll tell you this. Once... Um, I went out shoveling. I had to shovel. We had to take turns shoveling. And my mom, you know, there's five boys, so it's tag team shoveling. Uh, we had to go shovel the driveway and the walk in Romeoville. So I'm out there shoveling, and I had no gloves on uh, because I just wanted – I was so mad I had to shovel. I was like, ah. Oh. And I hate coats. I've always hated coats. Even in cold weather, I hated coats. But I, I begrudgingly put a coat on. I would never wear a wool hat because I hated what it did to my hair and the way it made me feel. <laughs> Because you would sweat underneath the wool hat. It always felt like there was an experiment going on underneath your your, your head. I, I'm serious. If you put on a wool hat, I, I I see hipsters wearing them now all the time for like, and I'm like, I guess because I'm a fat guy, I would sweat in it. And young, cool guys with their shirts untucked can wear them and they, they're fine. They just look good. But I put on a wool hat and you get like that weird sweaty feeling under your head. It feels like you're cooking something or like your head's a geranium. Oh, Jesus, I fucking hate a wool hat. And you know what? I hate a wool hat, but one time, Karen bought me uh, for Christmas like a sock, like um, you know what you know what Spider-Man pants look like with that pattern on them on on long johns. Well, she bought me a hat, but it wasn't a hat; it was a sleeve. Like you could put your arm all the way through it, and you just pulled it over your head. It was open on the top, uh, but it it hung like almost like a fucking sleeping cap, like wink and blink and a nod. And it looked fucking awesome. Oh, my God, did it look great on me. I was like, because at the time I had shaved my head on the sides, but I had my real long hair. So I could pull it down and it look, I, I had like a, I looked like a tough guy. I'm not going to lie to you. I looked like a badass. But the thing was, it just defeated the entire purpose because the top is open. So all the fucking heat escapes your head. That's what you're supposed to wear to keep warm, to keep your heat in your head and have the geranium head. But this time it was open. So it looked great, but it didn't keep you warm at all. But even I wore it once. And then I pulled it off my head because I wore it for like an hour out and I, I, and I pulled it off my head. I had stretched it out beyond fucking repair because I wear a size fucking eight and a quarter hat. So I had fucking destroyed this thing. It was like it was no good because then then I tried to flip it over and just abuse the other side. But unfortunately, it, it looked like a chef hat because I had opened it so much at the top and it just kind of hung over it like loose. It just it looked like you know what I looked like? I looked like an uncut cock. I mean, I'm seriously because I had pulled it down and it drooped over my face. So I looked like I, I looked like an anteater. I looked like I had a fucking fire helmet hat. Oh, dude, it was awful. Goddamn human anteater walking down the street, uncircumcised and and black too, which is even worse. Then you're like, oh no, that guy's fucking look, Mandingo's here and he's on upright feet. Oh, guy's cock has a knee. All right, so seriously, you can't walk around looking like Mr. Marcus in the winter. All right, so I watched him this week. There's another clip I saw. I saw I watched Superhead. Katrina, what's her name? Kareem Watkins? Who the fuck's... I, I can't remember her name, but her nickname is Superhead. That's all I know her about. I don't need to know her real name. Come on, her name is Superhead. What, what, uh, do I need to know her name is Jill? Fuck no! The girl's name is Superhead. That's your calling card? Done. That's it. I don't need to know your surname. I don't need to know your, your Superhead Wilson. <laughs> Superhead says it all. But uh, she's like a hip-hop groupie chick who's insane, crazy. Because I watched a movie called uh, The Jump Off, or Kiss and Tail, The Jump Off. And it was a documentary on Showtime about 
basically whores, like hip hop whores. And uh, could Watkins, is that her name? Katrina Watkins? No, you know what? It, <laughs> isn't that the name that fucking Arsenio Hall invokes in Coming to America? Katrina, Miss Katrina Watkins. And here he is coming to the stage. Sexual chocolate. Oh, God damn it. How funny is Coming to America? Oh, my Christ. I, I haven't seen it in years, but if it's ever on, I will stop. That, that barbershop, Jesus Christ. They were talking all the time about making a, a movie about that barbershop and Coming to America. I would watch it. I would watch it back to back. Like, for days, I would watch it. Dude, when he tells that story about Joe Lewis. Oh, dude. And the story about Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King came around the corner. He punched me in my chest. I said, Dr. King. He said, I'm sorry. I thought you were someone else. And that's where they let it stay. That's the end of it. I thought you were someone else. That Martin Luther King is standing around a corner waiting to punch a dude. Oh, my God. It's brilliant. <laughs> I don't know if it was improvised or it was in the fucking script, but Jesus Christ, Eddie Murphy used to be hilarious. Oh, my God. <laughs> Coming to America is a fucking... It's, it's an astonishing achievement. It is hilarity. All right, so... What was I talking about? How did I get into that? Superhead. Superhead. Uh, yeah, that's why. Because uh, uh, some guy was married to her and he's telling all these fucking horror stories. And, and then it's so funny, they talk to his friends and they're like, we told him not to marry her. Like, you know, because I, you, the, the unspoken thing is, that, you know, they all want to go, her name was Superhead. <laughs> Why? Why are you letting her in your house for more than a day? It, honestly, her name's not Super Dinner in a movie. Her, her name's not Super Crocheting or Super Vacuuming. You don't want to make her your fucking wife? Jesus Christ, her name's Superhead. Get it and break it off. That's it. You're done. See if she lives up to the name. And then, you know, maybe keep her on a few more times to go ahead and drive the point home. But uh, again, you don't want her. Her name's it's not Super Cooking. You don't want to marry that chick. Superhead, Jesus Christ! But she turns out to be a nut, and she goes to like the guy's school, and he, you know, I, there's a kid. Oh, dude, it's just a fucking nightmare. So I'm like, well, fuck, I got to Google Superhead immediately. And it turns out she made a porn clip with Mr. Marcus, and uh, and I watched it, and uh, uh, it's a pretty good nickname. Not gonna lie to you. <laughs> She goes off, man. It, like it, it's so funny. Like she's, uh, you know, two fisted in mouth and and like twisting and moving and grabbing and everything. So I'm, you know, it's just this perpetual motion fucking blowjob machine. I mean, it was just insane to watch. Like I, I don't know. Again, it took. I, and it, you know what's funny is you always hear that bullshit about who was the first guy to eat an egg. Who was the first guy that she started to do all that weird shit to? And, and he must have thought that he discovered fucking America. That guy was just like. <laughs> I guess, you know, I guess you want to marry her at that point. You're just like, oh, I can't even imagine you doing this ever for anybody else. Or you can do it to everybody else as long as you continue to pencil me in on a Wednesday at 8. I mean, I, as long as Superhead will just have you, if, you know, if you can just buy her a sandwich and then she goes to town with fucking, uh, you know, uh, no, you can't buy her a sandwich because then she got to hold it. She needs both hands for Superhead. <laughs> Superhead, I, uh, yeah, she, she just fucking puts in her earbuds from tweakedaudio.com slash 40 and gets two hands going and rocks it. Even Mr. Marcus makes a face at one point, like, God damn. Like, he even says that. He, like, he like pushes her away because she's she's like a Wolverine going at his cock. It's crazy. And uh, and then I will tell you this, watching the clip of Superhead, she's doing her Superhead nonsense, and uh, they get in close on it, and then they pull away, and you see it from a distance, and you see it from upside down in Mr. Marcus's point of view, and it's like, wow, that's Superhead. Superhead gives Superhead. And then he goes to fuck her. And you're like, no, 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 no. I don't want to see that. I want to see you finish with Superhead. She's got to go all the way to the fucking, it's like watching a marathon and then someone like with a mile to go, they hop in a car. Fuck all that. <laughs> finish the goddamn race, Superhead. <laughs> but sure enough, he, she gets her hindquarters up. She's got to get fucking, her hindquarters, what is she? she now Superhead is an animal. How horrible is that? You know what? Yeah, it is. Superhead is actually, it's not even a human being. It's just a beast from the fucking woods. <laughs> Named Superhead. And it shows up. It's got like a long anteater mouth or nose. And it fucking just goes to work with its two little paws. Gets its hindquarters up and presents. And Mr. Marcus just fucking plunges and goes to town. Man, I just fucking fast forwarded right through it. I'm like, bang, bang. And I found a whole cool sub uh, world of like hip hop groupies who are all naked online. I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. Like, you know, all these chicks have sex tapes. Because, you know, sex tapes are now old hat. But I will say this. Like, I, you know, I... Apparently, I've resided in the white internet for far too long. Because if you go to MediaTakeout.com, they've got like all the the cool stuff about hip hop stars and all those chicks. There's a bunch of chicks who've been in hip hop videos and and like singers like uh, Keyless. You know, my milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. She's naked. Like they got naked pictures of her. They get all these naked pictures of hip hop chicks. I was like, dude, I'm going there all the time now. Fucking Amber Pierce. Holy shit. Amber Pierce was uh, she was like this bald chick who was bang banging Kanye West. Man, I I don't. I don't know what her nickname was, but her body was fucking retarded. I mean, you see her, you're just like, oh, dude. 
you got to be shitting me. I mean, it's just, she's on the beach. And they're like, oh, Amber Pierce naked on the beach. I'm like, if I was Amber Pierce, I'd be naked everywhere. I would dare them to arrest me. I'd say, fuck, you can't, seriously, you can't arrest me. I'm, I'm art. You can't possibly lock me up. I'm just, literally, this is just, it's an art show. I'm a walking gallery, motherfucker. Look at it. Holy shit, is she hot. God damn. But yeah, Superhead, I watched her. I'm like, yeah, man, she was going off. But I, and then, like I said, all these crazy stories about her. I'm like, yeah, but her fucking name is Superhead. All right. But then she goes to get fucked, and it's like, I, I'm like, I don't want to see Superhead get fucked. Her name's a Super Vag. <laughs> Seriously, it's not Super Ass. You know, the rest of her is okay, but it's, it's you know, it's all about the show. All right, so. <laughs> anyway, what the hell was I talking about? How did I get into Superhead? So Why do you keep giving me high fives? What are you doing? Your hands were oh, my wool hat. Oh, uncut. Yeah, that's what I got from Mr. Marcus. Oh, dude. All right. Uh, you know what, folks? Do me a favor. Take out your tweakedaudio.com slash 40 earbuds right now and rub your face. Let's all take a breath. And uh, and I'll I'll reboot right now with, with what I was supposed to be talking about. <laughs> okay. Um, the weather. It's just the, the weather is fucked in Chicago. When I was a kid, uh, I was so mad. I threw on a coat and I go out to shovel. And uh, I was so mad I used all my little kid energy to shovel the entire driveway like to prove a point like oh you make me shovel i'll shovel the whole thing <laughs> and i'm shoveling and shoveling and shoveling and uh and i'm noticing that uh near the end of my shoveling adventures i can't hold the shovel anymore um i can't close my hands because i i started quick and then i'm doing it's a and i'm i'm not gonna go in i'm gonna spite everybody and i'm gonna finish shoveling and uh i look down and my hands are like purple Okay, like white and purple. They're weird looking. And uh, I don't know, as a little kid, you have no idea what's going on. So I finished the shoveling, of course. And I go inside and uh, my hands are numb. Like I can't feel them. Like I don't know what's going on. And I'm waiting for them to thaw out. So I'm shaking them and my mom looks and she realizes that I have grimace hands. Like she can actually see. I, I look like I have, I take, you know, uh, my hands and she's like, didn't you wear gloves? I said, no. She goes, oh my God. She goes, you know what? Get my medical emergencies book. And, you know, of course, that means everybody has to run around looking for the medical emergencies book. And nobody knows where the fuck the medical emergencies book is. It's, it's, believe me, we live in a four-room house. It's not like we had a fucking library where all the books were, okay? It was like holding up a wobbly table or it was in a fucking couch cushion holding on my mom's stash. I don't know where the fuck the medical emergencies book is. But luckily, I don't have to go look for it because my mom is freaking out about my hands. So all the other kids are running around there looking and looking. My mom takes me immediately over to the sink and she's like, oh my God, are you okay? She takes my coat off and she turns the hot water on and puts my hands under the hot water to thaw my hands out. And she's like, all right, you know, go ahead and rub your hands. And I'm, so I'm rubbing my hands under the hot water and I'm trying to thaw them, but they're still numb. But now they're starting to ache kind of like they're starting to hurt. And I'm rubbing them and I'm rubbing them. And uh, like a minute goes by and then Lenny uh, uh, runs in breathless. He's like, I got the medical emergencies book. And so my mom takes it and she looks up frostbite and I'm rubbing my hands underneath the hot water and my brother's there. And my, my mom's like, all right, here's what you do. And she looks up frostbite and she goes, by all, first things first, do not put your hands under hot water. Oh my God, get your hands out of the sink. <laughs> If you have frostbite, you're not supposed to put your hands in uh, in hot water, folks. I spend a minute rubbing my hands under hot water, purple and white, not even changing color, like hurting now and pain, and I'm rubbing it for a minute. My mom finally reads it out. Oh, my God! Almost tackles me to get me away from the sink. And she's freaking out and, and uh, loses her mind. And, uh, but it turned out, thankfully, I have, uh, you know, my hands are fine now. <laughs> but it was just funny to see my mom. She literally got the book, and she's like, okay, first things first, do not put your hands under hot water. Get away from the sink! Like, freaks out. My mom learning on the on the fly with children, <laughs> and uh, and then one time we were uh, it, it was so cold it was like freezing freezing cold and I, my mom we used to get shitty cars because again we were broke, um, so my mom's car wouldn't start so we had to push it and I was outside and we were pushing it and my car my hands were pushing I had, again no gloves because I'm a genius. <laughs> And uh, we finally pushed it. Like We had to get half a block and push it up into the driveway and turn it around a snow drift, and we're there. And I go to, to pull my hands off the trunk, and my hands were frozen to the trunk of the car. From I don't know, from sweating while pushing, and it was so cold. Um, so, uh, But this is, this is many years later after the frostbite debacle, so my mom knew what to do. Uh, my mom went inside, and they got a bucket of cold water and dumped it on the trunk and on my hands, and then I pulled my hands off and uh, left some skin on, on the trunk of the car. Not a lot. Thankfully, it wasn't like, you know, Christmas story. But uh, so I, I guess the bottom line is I know what you folks are going through out there and uh, and hated it, lived through it, moved. I Like, I, I, 
I would say that I'm out here for show business and my job and all that, but I mean, nobody hires me and I don't work ever, so I'm out here for the sun. That's it. I, <laughs> I'm out here so I don't have to do what you folks are doing right now, so I don't have to have to scramble for a medical emergencies book for a normal thing. <laughs> Uh, you know, because I, I can handle heat. Hot is hot. You know what I mean? If it's hot, get out of the heat. Go inside. But weather, cold, fuck all that. It sneaks up on you and you think you're okay and then you're not and all of a sudden you can't feel your nose. Dude, just cold puts you to sleep and kills you. Uh, <laughs> you guys know that, right? We all know that. <laughs> oh, stupid. <laughs> and that's not to say I don't get cold here, folks. I mean, I, uh, you know, it gets to be about 50 degrees here and I'm, I'm a lady. I'm like, oh my God, where's my fleece? Uh, I'm at work and it's just, I mean, you know, I have to have the door open and it's freezing and I got a little space heater like blowing right in my face and just a coat on. Oh, terrible. They're not terrible. You guys are, you people are mummies. You're in, you're like snow mummies at this point. So I apologize to you in the Midwest. Our friend Jill, our friend Jill in Milwaukee. She, it was funny. Uh, she just bought year one, year two. She's a listener and she's very nice. And, uh, she's been always very nice to me and, uh, she's very excited about the Packers. We should say that about Jill. Um, but she wrote me, she bought year one and year two this week. She bought the guy Jean and. Uh, she wrote me a note because she couldn't find it. I had to send her the links, whatever. And then on her Facebook page, I saw her post. And, and <laughs> it made me laugh, just the, the wording of it. She goes, she wrote, a hurricane. It really is. It's a snow hurricane. Aww. Like like this weird, you know, you could almost hear the longing in her voice as she was so devastated when she looked out of her house and saw the weather. I was like, because I, mean, I remember the weather when I was a kid, and you'd just be like, oh, this sucks. But from what I'm reading from everybody, there, I mean, it is horrifying like in a snow hurricane was a really good way to put it i'm like man yeah that's true from what all i saw and I, I heard you know i talked to max and he was at work yesterday and, and i'm like what are you doing there and he was ah, uh, the it, you know heavy stuff's not going to come down for a while <laughs> and he just he's like uh no i'll go home in the afternoon but i'm hoping the train is running and all that kind of stuff so because they were supposed to close lakeshore drive and uh yeah fucking chicago's a michael bay movie right now that's fucking crazy <sighs> but i freeze at work oh it's 50 degrees folks i'm just chattering my teeth <laughs> oh, this happened to me at work yesterday. All right, look. Uh, all right, I'm going to preface this, folks. Um, I usually don't talk about this kind of thing. It's not my thing to talk about. Uh, but uh, I feel that it's uh, that I should bring it to you tonight. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I should. Maybe I shouldn't. I should just fucking skip it. At the, well, after that, I got to say it, I guess. I don't know, stupid. All right, I'm at work. Uh, Karen and I went out... Um, to eat uh, yesterday, we went to a, there's a tr food truck called Koji. All right, Koji's the but Koji's like the mother of all food trucks. They were like the the ones who started it because there's the shitty taco truck, but then Koji was the first fancy kind of. It's Koji, it's Korean barbecue, and it's really good. Uh, and it's this is weird. I saw a story that in El Paso, Texas, because I guess there's food trucks everywhere, okay, and they're really kind of exploding. But in El Paso, Texas, which I've I've been there and done stand up at the comic strip. Hello. Uh, that was where I found out. That's where I made the decision to get the surgery, the gastric bypass, because I left a puddle on the fucking stage from sweat pouring off of me. And Pardo almost electrocuted himself standing in my fat. Uh, <laughs> horrific. <laughs> Terrible. Oh we should have just mopped it up with a sham wow and squeezed it and fried some fries in it in the back. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, so uh, in El Paso, they have food trucks, but they're trying like they don't like them there, I guess. So not only can they not be within a thousand feet thousand feet thousand yards thousand yards seems far <laughs> you cannot be within 10 football fields hey, we don't want you in el paso basically is our message to you no it's a, it's a thousand feet of a, a brick and mortar restaurant building but also even because that's fine that then they'll find places to go and they'll be out of the way and you know they can always find a place to serve food and people will find them especially with twitter and the marketing but now they made a rule that they can't park and cook food and wait for customers they have to be flagged down by customers to pull up and give them food. They can't... What? Yes, you, you, they can't park and say, come get some food from us. They have to drive, perpetually drive, until someone goes, hey, hey, I want a taco, and then they have to pull over and then fire up the grill and cook them their food and then drive away. Like a, like a crazy food taxi. Instead of a food truck that can park in the, like a, a mobile restaurant, they want it to be a, uh, like a hit-and-run burrito service. And I, read, I heard that, and it made me laugh because this is my fucking idea. Do you remember I said this like fucking 30 episodes ago? I said they shouldn't even just have food trucks. They should just have guys with slingshots firing food at people on the run as they go past them. I'm like, God damn you, El Paso, Texas. You stole my goddamn idea. I want some fucking royalties, you pricks. It's bad enough I got to come and bomb in your town every year. 
and I've been there in years, and I, you know, I, and I didn't really bomb. I did okay. No, not really. I did, I did okay. <laughs> That's all. I just did okay. Uh, Pardo would bring me in. He and I would go down there, and uh, uh, we would stay in his condo, which was a nice condo. And uh, you know, that was that was where Jimmy and I we uh, I shouldn't say this, but we we raided the, the Booker was a, he's a nice guy named Bart Reed. He was always very good to me, and uh, we went into his office and we raided his cabinet of demo tapes, and we took them back to the condo. And we watched comedians all night. We watched like <laughs> 50 comics. That's that's high. Probably only like 10 comics. We took people we knew, and then we took people we didn't know. You know, so we, that we'd heard of that we wanted to see how good they were. But then we would just take like suicide tapes and be like, "Who's this? Take it." You know what I mean? And we'd watch them back at the uh, condo, and you'd you'd decide whether this person was funny or not funny. You know, we just basically played uh, <laughs> the emperors. We, we we would sit back on the on the couch and we thumbs down. We'd watch them, but we did get to see Tommy Savitt, who's a comic who's fucking hysterical. We put, took his demo tape and we were like, dude, this guy's really funny. Who's this guy? I mean, he's great. So that was neat. We got to discover Tommy Savitt, but then we watched a bunch of people that we did not care to discover ever again. <laughs> but it was fun. Uh, there used to be a demo tape. I used to have a tape. I think I still have it somewhere uh, of Star Search auditions, and they're they're legitimate. It was compiled by the people at Star Search, and it was one of those things that went around, and it was a compilation of people auditioning for Star Search, and uh, in I mean, people in their living room with a hairbrush, like that quality of people, uh, people doing stand-up on their deck. Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? How are you? And doing the most, you know, the knock-knock jokes. Oh, it's painful to watch. It's painful. It doesn't mean I didn't watch it on a fucking loop uh, over and over <laughs> and go, wow. You know, and, and this is what I'm... And then you go... And this is what I'm competing with. And I can't get booked. Like, I can't. Because right now, I don't work any clubs. I guarantee you, if I send a tape, guess where it goes? The fucking suicide cabinet. And the guys working that week pull it out and watch it. And I got to pray that they go, oh, this guy's kind of funny. I'm the, I want to be the Tommy Savage of future generations. I want other comics to go ahead. I have made eye contact with you for like the last five minutes. How weird is that? I usually never do that. I never, I usually just do the show in a space. And then periodically, I look at Lily. For this whole thing about where I've been, I've, for some reason, been staring at her for five minutes right in her eyes. Weird. All right. I apologize. I don't know if that was odd. Like, I transfixed you with a weird hypnosis. That was strange. Uh, do me a favor. Just put on your tweakedaudio.com slash 40 year buds and then just tune out the rest of the show and we'll, we'll be finished. I'll, I'll give you the high sign when I'm done. And now you're looking away from me like I'm uh, like you don't want me to stare. How weird. All right. So things got just creepy here. All right. So, uh, the fuck was I talking about? I want to be the Tommy Savage of future generations. I want other comics to discover me and say that I was funny. Koji. Koji truck. You'll hear why I'm dancing around this subject, folks, eventually. Uh, so last night I woke up. Uh, we had talked about maybe going to Koji, and then I woke up a little late, and I was like, ah, they're only there till 9. Should we go? And I had to work in Graveyardville last night. She's like, well, let's go. And I said, all right, well, that's fine. So we went, we parked, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I like food trucks, as I mentioned. There's a new truck, Ludo, Chef Ludo, Ludo Bites. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, my Christ. Chef Ludo, because, you know, I don't like... I don't want to go to a shitty truck. I want a fancy truck. And Chef Ludo is fancy. He's like he's been on Top Chef and stuff. He makes his fried chicken like he he takes ch chicken thighs and he molds them into like these fried chicken balls with homemade Dijon mustard and homemade barbecue sauce. Holy fuck, it's so good. Chef Ludo's the best. Go follow Ludo Bites on Twitter, and uh, especially if you're not in California, because then you'll just you'll you get mocked. <laughs> <laughs> you won't know what you're missing. But when you see that it's in Burbank and on a Friday from noon to 2.30, I'm there. All right, just know, if you're ever wondering, where, hey, where's Mike? And on Friday afternoon from noon to 2.30. Well, that, I, I'm not there two and a half hours. How weird would that be in a fucking food truck? I'm just ordering food until they drive away. And then when they drive away, I chase them down the street like a dog, hoping they don't hit the brakes and make me run into them quickly in the back. Uh, so instead, I go there and I'll have a piece of fried chicken and then I go home and go to bed because there's no better way to sleep than with a belly full of fried poultry. So <laughs> this would explain my ever-expanding fatness. Uh, bring me back, El Paso. I, I'll leave a puddle on your stage again. I, I, I was fat there and now I've gone through the, I've gotten skinny and then fat again. I should come back. Bring me back. It's like you never missed me. I'm just fat Mike shows up. All right. Uh, sweatpants wearing Mike on stage. What a fucking horrible person. All right, so. Koji truck went there last night and uh one of the reasons i wanted to go was because they have uh look their food is all good all right they have uh they have calamari taco and it's korean so it's spicy they got a spicy pork taco they got short rib oh dude short rib burrito oh my god honestly i i if someone gave me the choice of koji short rib burrito and 20 minutes with superhead watkins You know who needs to have a truck? 
<laughs> Superhead Watkins needs to have a truck. Yeah. You know what? That changes everything. That changes the game, Moth. Superhead Watkins needs to have a goddamn truck. Whether here or in El Paso, because I'll tell you what, there will be everybody flagging down that fucking truck. You tell me you're not going to flag down that truck? You see Superhead Watkins coming to town, tolling around driving, huge mouth on the side of the truck, boom. You don't even have to see her. She could just have like a, it could be like an armored car, like a van with just a hole in it. Like, you know, there's a gas tank and a glory hole, and she pops one of them open, you just stick your cock through it and hope it's not the gas tank. And Superhead goes to work! Oh, Superhead Stevens! That's her name, Superhead Stevens. I like Watkins better. All right, so, Randy Watkins. That's what the name, that's why I got it from Coming to America. It was Randy Watkins, and then it's fucking, oh, he comes out and sings, I believe the children are our future. Oh, my God. Go watch Coming to America. Turn me off. Why are you listening to me and wasting time? There's so much great stuff out there to experience from the past. <laughs> Sexual chocolate. Slows the microphone down. Oh, soul glow. Dude, Coming to America is genius. All right, I can't get it out of my head. When I, when I, fifth year of high school, I would sit there in the back of the room with me and Bruce Edwards and fucking Bri- Ryan Kirschbaum. Brian Kirschbaum? No. Me, Bruce Edwards, uh, Daryl Jackson. Oh, there was a guy who could do all the voices from We Are the World. He could do every single voice. Awesome. Did you see that Brazilian cab driver who can do Michael Jackson? Uh, sorry, I just popped that in my head. All right, so. <laughs> Come on. Superhead Stevens with a fucking Karen Superhead Stevens with a truck. God damn, that'd be great. All right, so what did I uh, start re- start Oh, yeah, so if I had the choice. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I flagged on Superhead's truck. I can't lie to you. <laughs> Fuck you, Koji. I like your burrito. It's good, but. All right, so Koji has, they have uh, uh, all these things, but then they have, uh, they'll have special things. They have a thing called a Blackjack Molita, which is like their fancy quesadilla with like hot sriracha sauce on it. God damn it. Food from a moving vehicle should not taste this good. So, Koji. We go there last night. Then they have prime uh, short rib sliders. But then they have a special menu item every day. And it'll be something uh, crazy, whether they'll have, you know, like a weird quesadilla or some special uh, barbacoa meat or, you know, something. So then I saw the thing on Twitter last night. Uh, during the day yesterday, uh, they were promoting something they called, and, and it's an unfortunate name, folks. And you know I would never order something like this if it wasn't really good. But the name was the Cheesy Wheezy, which pissed me off. <laughs> All right, because then all I can think about is Isabel Sanford with a fucking slice of Swiss on her head, and I got no interest in it, none. Uh, but instead, it's the Cheesy Wheezy, and I read the description of it, and it is a, uh, a Bangkok-style street sandwich, and it's essentially a grilled cheese, but with peanut butter, bananas, and sriracha hot sauce on it, oh. Korean hot sauce. Not just sriracha, like they make their own special hot sauce, like it had, it had a special chili sauce with bananas, uh, grilled cheese, and then peanut butter. And I, I read it and went, yeah, uh, you know what? I'm in. Definitely. Let's do that tonight. Because they were going to be by our house but from 6 to 9. So uh, I told Karen about it, woke up a little late. And she goes, come on, let's go. I said, all right, let's try to make it. If we don't make it, no big deal. So we made it. Get in line. And uh, I should tell you this. I foolishly always order too much food from this thing because I can only eat you know one thing. But I, I'm so hungry, I'll order like two or three things. I've, but I've, I've stopped doing that. I've gotten away from doing that. But last night still. I'm with my wife, and she does the same thing where she'll overorder. So I said, what do you want? She goes, well, I want the sliders, uh, the pork, uh, the short rib sliders. I said, okay. I said, oh, well, you get that. I get this cheese sandwich thing, and then we'll split a burrito. She's like, well, I'm pretty hungry. I think I want a whole burrito. I said, you sure? She said, yeah. I said, all right. I said, well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll get one for me then, too. What I should have said was I'll have a couple bites of yours, which would have been essentially the same thing as us splitting it, all right? Because my, my wife's not going to fucking, you know, she's not an animal. She's not going <laughs> to fucking hug it to her chest. You can't have any. No, she's going to share it with me. So I should have done that. But instead, stupid me, fat me takes over. And I ordered uh, the Koji short rib sliders for Karen. I ordered me a cheesy wheezy sandwich. And then I got two short rib burritos. And what's weird is like the sliders are, I, I think, you know, three bucks. And uh, the burrito's five. But the burrito's like, Twice the size of the fucking, well, but I guess that makes sense. Math-wise, six. <laughs> Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> so we order a couple of burritos. We go, order that. We go home. And uh, I hadn't eaten all day. You know, I just woke up. We went and got the stuff. We went home. And uh, as I knew what happened, here's the thing. All right. I, I should tell you, because uh, when I was crazy fat, I could eat a million things at once. All right. But now, after having that gastric bypass, 
you know, I don't have nearly the appetite that I did. My fat head still thinks that I do, but I don't. But uh, I can eat something, for, you know, in, in like half an hour, then a half hour later, I'm hungry again, so then I can eat again. So it's this weird thing where uh, I can't eat a giant meal. I can eat like a normal person, but then in a half hour, I might be hungry again. Does that make sense? So we get these two burritos, we get the sliders, we get this cheese sandwich, and I go, all right, I go, why don't I, you give me a slider, I'll give you half this cheese sandwich, and, and I'll be in Scotland before you. She's like, all right, great. <laughs> she takes her burrito, I take my burrito, and I just, I put it to the side, because I know I'm not even able to eat it. I have no idea why I bought it. Stupid. So uh, I eat the short rib slider, fucking amazing. I mean, it, and it's just, you know, it's got kimchi on it and short rib. I mean, it's it's pretty complicated. It's not just a straight ahead slider, but it's really good. And then I eat this banana uh, Thai Bangkok street sandwich, whatever the fuck it's called. And, uh, dude, fucking amazing. Oh, my God, was it great? It's got peanut butter and bananas on it. It's got, like, a chili sauce. It's got cheese. It's in a grilled bread. Oh, my God, it was awesome. It was just like, it was just that, you know, you want to put your dick in the sandwich. It was so goddamn good. And, uh. I gave her half, and she bit it, and she looked at me, and she goes, this is the weirdest sandwich I've ever eaten. And I go, well, do you want to trade your slider back? And she's like, no, it's okay. It's good. It's just weird. So then we ate our stuff, and then she opens her burrito, and she's eating her burrito, and I can't I can't even touch my burrito. I'm like, oh. But I have to get ready and start going to graveyard film. So I get ready. I take a shower, I floss, brush, whatever I got to do. But folks, again, these are details you don't need. <laughs> these are details just to make a story longer for no reason. Uh, but I did. I flossed and brushed. Uh <laughs> I had to go get my teeth cleaned. I tell you, all right, I, I can't, I can't. All right, she just, literally, I went to fucking divert, and she showed me how, where we're at time-wise. So I'm like, all right, I can't divert. So uh, what happened was I, I get ready for work, and I get dressed, and then I go to pack up and bring, I bring food, because I'm going to be over there for like eight hours, so I actually bring dinner. So uh, Karen made homemade macaroni and cheese last weekend, and there was still some left. So I made a bowl of macaroni and cheese, and then I heated up the rest of her burrito. And I, which was about half of the, the short rib burrito. So I heat that up, get ready to go to work, go over to work. And uh, you got to eat the macaroni and cheese pretty quick. And uh, I, so I eat that and I bring, uh, you know, I bring drinks and whatever. I'm over there and uh, I can't eat the burrito right away, but it sits there on my desk for like an hour, you know, getting cold. But I still ate it because it was, it was really good. It's still good, cold, fine. So I'm at work last night, about five in the morning. Check that. About four in the morning, I get, uh, and again, folks, I apologize. Let me apologize beforehand for all of this. But uh, I get pretty heavy intestinal disorder where I'm like, oh, man, what's going on? And uh, I actually have uh, uh, gas, all right, from about four o'clock to five o'clock. And I'm talking like every five minutes, something has to be done about it. All right. Uh, you know, you, you basically you have to uh, let some steam out of the boiler or there's going to be an explosion. All right. <laughs> Am I making any sense? But again, I'm alone, so it doesn't matter. I'm downstairs and I'm just I mean, I'm killing plants. I mean, it is bad. <laughs> it's horrible. All right. It's really bad. Uh, and, and I'm but I'm it's it's fine. It's alleviating itself. But there's rumbling like my stomach's making noise. And, uh, you know, it's just because it's this huge broth of uh, there's like I said, there's. Ritz crackers in there now because I had some Ritz crackers at like two in the morning, and then the you know sliders, short rib, fucking cheesy wheezy sandwich, macaroni and cheese. It's just it's a nightmare in there. I can't. It is a gang fight in my stomach, <laughs> and they are armed, so uh, they are going at it. And every once in a while there has to be a, a release of uh, some sort of uh, uh, air. All right, I'm I'm again I'm very uncomfortable telling you this story, but it has to be told because it happened last night. So. <laughs> So finally, this goes on from like four to five. And I mean, every five minutes, it's horrible. It's really horrible. And uh, about five in the morning, happens again. It's, you know, clockwork. And uh, I go to uh, involve myself in that activity. And I realize this is not a drill. You need to stop what you're doing right now. And so I do. I don't let anything go. I stop because I realize that... Uh, at that point, if I if I try to let some steam out of the boiler, well, the boiler's just going to blow water all over the floor. <laughs> Does it make sense? I'm trying to be as vague as possible and yet still get my point across, folks. It is uh, it is bad. So, I mean, it happens at 5 in the morning, and that happens, and I'm at work, okay? But I'm going home in an hour. So I'm like, well, I can hold out for an hour because I would much rather do this in my house than have to do it here. So uh, about five minutes goes by, and my stomach is now... It, it is, you know, I have, right now, the Latin kings have just met the disciples in my stomach. 
and uh, and the guys from the the Brown Pride Colombian Thirteen Gang, whatever the fuck their name is, the real devastating ones. They've just made their way over from the liver, and now it is a huge <laughs> brawl. And there's no, there's actually noise. Like you thought that thing that came out earlier tonight. I imagine that like on 15 there's like that George Carlin bit of like oy, 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 oy. like I mean all this stuff's happening in my stomach and I'm like oh and then uh, I will tell you that this gang fight decides to move to my kidneys to where it's because you're not I'm not letting anything out of the chamber so now it's all backing up and now it's expanding out and I am in pain like I mean like I get this shot of blinding pain and uh, it's about 10 after 5 now only 10 minutes have gone by I've got to wait an hour and not only that, I still got to go and fucking, you know, if I want to deliver newspapers, all that, I got I to actually move. Like, I, I don't want to, I don't even want to get up out of the chair. Like, I don't know what the fuck is going to happen. So I'm sitting there, the gang fight's raging, and now I get this blinding pain, and I, I kind of stand up, and I actually double over. And uh, I, I, I realize that, uh, that iceberg right ahead. <laughs> there is about to be a huge accident and I need to do something about it. So I get up and uh, I'm bent over and I'm, I'm hobbling. Like I can't even walk and I figure, well, I'll just, I'll stand here until the pain goes away and then I'll, I'll do something, but the pain's not going away. Like it's this weird, it's, I can't move. Uh, it, so I'm, I'm gingerly grabbing, like I grab my iPhone, I grab my wallet because I don't want to leave anything down in the office just in case I die in this excursion. Uh, but I'm waiting to be able to make my move. So uh, the pain, I, I had tears in my eyes. I, I won't lie to you. I, it was like that bad. And I'm bent over. I got tears in my eyes. I'm waiting. And then finally, after what seems like forever, but was probably only 90 seconds, it goes away. There's like a, like a, you feel a dissembling. I, I'm sure you've had this in your stomach. Where all of a sudden it rumbles. It goes like, and everything kind of settles. And I run. Because I have a window of opportunity to climb through and I'm not about to fucking miss it. I mean, that train is rolling and I see an open boxcar and I need to ride to fucking Topeka. I got to get in that goddamn boxcar. I fucking run. I lock the door. I slam it behind me. And I'm not lying. I sprint. I sprint through the lobby, through the door. I sprint up the stairs and I'm running like fucking fast because I don't know what's going to happen. And I, I start to feel like rumbling and pain and I'm running and I got to well, run down one hallway and run down another hallway and then another hallway to get into the restroom. So I'm fucking... I'm sprinting, and now I should tell you, you know, it's 5 in the morning. Um, <laughs> it's now about 5.15. People are starting to wake up for work. I mean, usually I have the place to myself at night, and I can do whatever the fuck I want. I can dance around. I can sing. I can jump. I can do whatever the fuck I want, and nobody's going to notice. But, you know, 5 in the morning, I could run into somebody in the hallway. I could hit them with a newspaper. I mean, it's happened. <laughs> But it does, thank God, I sprint up the stairs, I open the door, fucking slam, it slams into the wall, I sprint down the hallway, I take a left, I sprint down that hallway, and I sprint, and I fucking dive into the bathroom. Like, I, there's nothing calm about this whatsoever, folks. I dive into the bathroom, and it's a small bathroom from the hallway, and I smash into the fucking wall. Like, probably not a good idea, because that could di dislodge something or make something loose. I have no idea. But I fucking, I wham! I fucking run as hard as I can. I smash into the wall. I pinball over. I shove the door closed. I don't even take my coat off. I don't even, I, nothing. I just fucking, I yank down. I sit down, folks. And uh, I, I, I can't even describe to you the, the noise that occurs. Uh, I, I think I actually moaned like I made a noise like oh like it was like it was that bad like it was Jeff Daniels from Dumb and Dumber but not for laughs like like for you'd feel sad like if it was a guy it, it was just it was truly uh, like an ass holocaust I mean it just came flying out of me and I mean it just wouldn't stop it would not fucking because it's macaroni and cheese and a slider and a fucking a Bangkok street sandwich. I mean, like, uh, you know, that's what it was. That had to be the tipping point, right? Because I've eaten every, all these other things and never had this happen. The Bangkok street sandwich got in there and fucked everybody up. You know what it was? My In my stomach, it was like the Wanderers. And there was like, you know, the gang with Ken Wall, and then there was the Ducky Boys, and then there were the Baldies, and then the fucking Wongs. That was the fucking, that was the sandwich. They were the Wongs. Don't fuck with the Wongs, folks. We know that, right? Don't fuck with the Wongs. The Wongs got in my stomach and fucking, and caused, wreaked havoc. So I sit down, and I, I, unload it's like if that toilet was chicago i was the blizzard because i just fucking left you guys completely buried awful by the way i should mention this entire shitting exploit is brought to you by tweakedaudio.com slash 40 
So, I mean, I unload. I mean, it's like literally if your ass was a weapon. Like, I, I, I feel like if they would, they could have done this, they, they could feed all of that food to a guy and then and then put him in a palace and then he would kill everybody in the palace and they would sneak in and steal the plans. I mean, it was that... <laughs> It's this horrible smell. I mean, and it's just, it's just fucking, and it won't stop. Again, it's just showering out of me. It's just, it, and it, it is filling up to the point where I start to worry. Like, I'm like, oh my God, am I, is there going to be, am I going to lose a, a, a fucking, like a, some intestine or, or a, a, a kidney? What's flying out of me at this point? I thought my heart might come out. I might shit out my heart. That's not good. So I, I, again, coat on, I'm hunched over. Like it's work. It, this, I should have punched in for this shit. It's horrible. <laughs> So I'm hunched over and I'm just like looking at the ground and I'm, I'm actually sweating. And I tell, thank God I'm not teared up anymore because I will tell you it's complete relief. And it just, but it won't stop. And I'm looking down and I'm, I'm just like, I'm, I'm actually breathing heavy. I'm going, oh my God. And I, I didn't even take my coat off. I'm, I'm hunkered down. And uh, to my left, I see the doorknob move. And a woman walks in. <laughs> And uh, I got to tell you, folks, that's surprising because I'm a guy who's meticulous. I'm a I'm a double locker. I'm a locker with a locker. I put a little I got, you know, I actually carry around one of those wooden wedges that you just jam under a door to make sure no one walks in. I actually carry those just in case. I carry a padlock that I affix to every bathroom I ever use. It's I don't even let Karen come into the bathroom when I'm in the bathroom. I'm not even joking. But in my haste to get rid of the pain, to shit out my heart. In the in the frenzy I was in to shit my heart out of my chest, uh, I shoved the door closed and didn't lock it. And a little old lady in a dressing gown and slippers walks in. And I'm hunkered down. I'm still in a coat. Like, I don't even think she saw one ounce of bare flesh. I, I didn't even get... It looks like I'm just sitting there. I, I, I'm sweating. I'm on a toilet. I'm hunched over. She thinks I'm spiking my arm and shooting heroin. I will tell you there's black tar involved, but it is not heroin. And uh, I'm, I'm hunked over. I see the door. I look at her and she makes eye contact with me and she goes, oh, and I, and I don't know what to say or do. So I just go, yes. She says, are you okay? Because I, I will tell you this, this has happened before. Like I said, if Karen comes into the bathroom, I'm furious and I will one word answer her until she get. It's just like, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Literally, I will do that. I mean, I just don't, I don't want you in there. It's not, that's not a couple's, that's not people time. That's not party time. We're not chatting. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but this granny walks in and I should tell you that like, she's not, it wasn't like she was coming to use the bathroom. I don't know why the fuck she's even there. She, she actually looks concerned. Probably because she realizes there's a junkie in the bathroom. Uh, and I, she, I said, yes. And she looks and she goes, oh, and she makes like a wind space because now it hits her that, you know, she's in a shit cabin. And uh, and she just goes, I just, are you all right? And I said, yes. Like, I just wanted to go. She goes, oh, she goes, well, you you woke me up. You smashed into my wall. I, I live next door and I, I heard a huge bang and I didn't know what was going on in here. And I went, I'm fine. <laughs> And she goes, okay, I just, you're okay? I go, yes. <laughs> All right. She just, whew. and she like fans her face like an old lady would. Like, like you know, that like an old man who's proud of he just fucked up a bowl. And uh, she turns around and like closes the door. And I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm so mad and furious but relieved. It's this weird, I'll tell you, I don't know if I've ever felt that much emotion at one point in my entire life. Honestly. I'm usually dead inside. But at this point, I have gotten rid of anything that is dead inside of me. So I fucking lean over and I lock the fucking lock. And I sit there and uh, finish. Um, and then uh, uh, they don't have a plunger in this office. So I, I just pray. Like in my head, I'm like, I, Jesus, I have to pray. Because, uh, you know, when I'm finished and I get all uh, cleaned up and everything's all squared away, I have to hit flush. And... Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I have to be honest. I have no idea what's going to happen. 
because uh, first of all, I didn't. I I'm just letting my heart go. I mean, I'm just gonna let my heart go right down the fucking drain with everything else. I'm not gonna sift around looking for it. I shit out my heart. That's that. Uh, but I so I I just I pray. I sit there and I pray, and I I flush, and uh, thankfully because it was all. Uh, let's put it this way. Other than my heart, none of it was solid. <laughs> but there, there was so much of it. I'm not even kidding you. I'm not. This is I, again. I apologize for the being graphic. It was at least five inches above the water. I mean, it was like wow. crazy. It was like, it looked like I. I, I bet I could have filled up a fish bowl. No! Like I, it was that fucking horrifying. Oh, I fucked this bowl up from. And normally, like I tell you, when I was a kid, there used to be times when you'd be like watching basketball with your friends and then you walk out you'd be like dude i just fucked up that bowl and you're like proud of it you're like haha but i mean dude 5 15 in the morning at your shitty night job and you just and then grandma came in and took a peek at you while it was happening i mean this whole thing is just a nightmare but i didn't know what to say to her i had absolutely nothing to say to this woman it's just like yes out get out like i don't know what to say so i just fixed her with a steely stare as she fucking walked out and then i flushed and thank god it went down and uh and I just, I literally wobbled out. It, it, it looked like I, I'd just gotten laid. I had like wobbly legs from that. Like, you, you know, when you get laid and you get that wobbly thing in your legs, I just, I wobbled down the hallway just like, oh my Christ, I can't, what the hell just happened to me? Uh, I get reverse raped. That's what happened. <laughs> I got raped from the inside out. I, I've never been raped, but I'm assuming that's what it feels like, but going in instead of coming out. Oh, it was terrible. Oh. But that's what happens when you eat fucking, you know, sliders and macaroni and cheese and all this. I mean, it was just terrible. It was like this this weird bitch's brew that just fucking couldn't wait to get out of me. It was the perfect storm of shist. Horrendous. Because we've been looking for different places to eat. You know what I mean? It was like, you know, this this happened. Uh, oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. So then I got up today and I, I woke up early, as you know, because I was going to come. But then you were eating, so I didn't want to come here. Um, we Karen and I went to lunch earlier today. We went to a... Uh, there's this new place I follow on Twitter called Sweet Butter Kitchen. It's it's a fancy place. That Chef Ludo I talked about his truck, the Ludo truck. He taught them how to make a croque monsieur, which is like a fancy French ham and cheese. Whatever. And that's all you need to do. You got a Chef Ludo's involved in a weird sandwich. I'm in. Done. I don't learn my fucking lesson. Okay. So uh, we go for lunch at this joint. And uh, you walk right up to the counter and order. But the problem is... Then we go to find a place to sit, and it's so busy, there's nowhere to sit, and they they take your money up front. This is weak, man. It's like they, they have this whole seating policy where you pay first, and then they seat you, but then you have to wait for your food. You've already paid. Well, dude, they don't tell you how long it's going to be. There are people there complaining. There are people like you know eating, and, and uh, uh, there are people waiting for their food. There are people saying, we've waited 40 minutes. We don't have our food yet. Karen and I are sitting at a table. We're waiting. I mean, dude, I ordered, I ordered a ham sandwich. She got these, uh, unbelievably, I don't know why she got sliders, but she did. And... Uh, <laughs> And so we're waiting on this. And it's a fancy joint. That's the whole thing is it's upscale food. So, uh, and I will say this, by the way, as an aside, uh, out in front, because there was all these tables, everybody was there. You know who was eating there? Chucky from Rock, Rock Sugar. Wow. And uh, I saw him twice, saw him and uh, made eye contact twice. He didn't make a move to say hello to me. So I decided I was not going to make a move to say hello to him. He was eating with uh, his girlfriend or whoever it was. And I was with Karen and I... Maybe he didn't see me or he didn't, but, and he had a hat pulled down over his hair, but I knew it was him. Uh, but, uh, you know, I guess maybe with the, without the buffer of Jess there to, you know, to say hello, you know what I mean? Uh, but he, and he was eating and he was one of the guys who went and complained because we were sitting there and I was happy to get seated away from him. And then he came back there. And I had to look down because I didn't want to be that guy. Cause again, folks, I don't jock anybody. All right. So, so we're waiting to eat and, uh, we order the food and then they bring it and it's cold after 40 minutes the food was cold and they they're supposed to bring like an aioli and they didn't and it was just i will tell you the folks sweet butter kitchen it's a it's a good idea in theory but don't ever eat there okay <laughs> because they they it was like we were waiting and we complained to like four different people there was this hipster guy he was a hipster waiter he had the hat on or the the, the shirt on with the name and uh he walked around with his hands in his pockets the whole fucking time, he's got his hands in his pockets. So whenever he would walk by, I'd go, oh, haircut. Because he, cause he had like a fancy, like, you know, beaver fucking crazy stack of hair. And he just had his thumb up his ass the entire fucking time. He never went to, you know, look, 
I've worked in restaurants a million times. If you see people aren't happy or you see that they don't have their food, go be engaging. It's part of your job, especially at a fine dining joint. Walk up and just go, hey, you know what? Very busy. Can I bring you guys some chips? Maybe I'll tide you over. Get them a muffin. Get them something, anything. But don't walk around with your fucking haircut and a thumb up your ass. God damn it. People hate you enough. I, every time we walk by, I go, haircut. You know, and Karen's just laughing. Like, why are you doing this? I go, because this is horrible. So we get our food. Cold. Uh, you know, and I, I got this croque monsieur. Folks, I got to tell you something. I don't, I don't like Swiss cheese, and I don't like hot ham. What the fuck did I order the sandwich for? Because I got tricked, because it was like a French version of it, so I thought it would taste better. Nope, it's still Swiss cheese and fucking ham on bread. It's not like somebody comes over in a beret and goes, ooh la la, and it tastes better. Fuck no. The goddamn, it's just a, so what, they make it in France? So what? It mean, they made it in goddamn on Ventura Boulevard, and it tastes just like a fucking ham and cheese that I hate. Came with an arugula salad, which was good. I like arugula. I've, I've decided I enjoy arugula. And uh, Karen got her little sliders, and then they were cold, and her fries were cold, and she had to send that back. So I gave her half my ham sandwich, and then even more, because I hate hot ham. I don't like hot ham. Why would I order a hot ham sandwich? Stupid. So I eat about a third of the sandwich, and then I eat my arugula salad. I eat some of her fries, and then I said, I'm hungry, so I ordered chicken. They had, like, again, they don't have chicken tenders. They have, like, uh, chicken you know, amandori special flavoring tenders with a buttermilk ranch aioli. Like, you know, again, it's not, but you know what you order? It's fucking chicken tenders. That's all it is. It's just chicken. They, no, there's not a fancy chicken. It's like this chicken has a job or he's rich or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just chicken with breading on it. What the fuck is wrong with me? Why do I put so much credence in food? Where I'm like, we got to go to this place. You know, Chef Ludo said it's great. It's just a ham and cheese and chicken. It's nothing. And again, it's just pre-shit. That's all it is. I keep saying it, but for some reason, I'm fascinated by it. I love it. So we go, we order it, and we get the food. It's bad. We eat it. And uh, and I must say, it just stuck inside me, and I didn't like it. So we go to Split, and uh, I go, I'm going to use the restroom. And Karen's like, what are you doing in there? Cause she doesn't know about last night. Uh, she knows that if I don't like food, uh, I'm going to boot it. You know what I mean? I'm just going to get rid of it. Especially cheese and fries and shit that's just going to sit in my stomach for a month. And uh, But she doesn't know about last night. She doesn't know that I, right now, I'm scared of bringing my colon into the equation at all. <laughs> So anything that goes in my stomach, I'm getting rid of it, at least for a day or two. So uh, I'm going to boot I'm on the way out. So I go to the men's room, and she goes out to the car, and uh, the men's room's locked. And uh, I'm like, all right. So I stand there waiting, and it's not convenient, I should tell you this. Their men's room and ladies' room are right next to one another, but they're by an exit, so people are coming in. I've got to get out of their way. You can't stand inconspicuously. You're in everybody's way as you're waiting to get into the restroom. Uh, so I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. And the thing is, if I wait too long to boot, I, I, let me spare you, but I'll tell you anyway. If I wait too long to do this, uh, it's going to get digested, and then it'll, and then it's a fucking slog. And then who knows what's going to happen. So I'm waiting. I'm going to do it there. Uh, but I'm, I, that's just the problem is I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Five minutes goes by. I'm like, what the fuck is going on in this bathroom? So, uh, But I, I don't, I'm not one of those idiots who knocks or pounds them, and I don't care. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. Unlike some grandmothers I know. <laughs> so uh, I'm waiting and waiting. And finally I hear a flush. They flush inside there. So I'm like, thank God. You know, I don't know what the hell's going on in there. But uh, nobody comes out. And uh, so I'm waiting. And then I hear another flush. <laughs> and I'm starting to go, oh, okay. I think I get it now. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't, I'm not going to pound again. I don't want to embarrass anybody. I'm not an old lady. In a dressing gown. <laughs> yes. Third flush. And now I'm starting to, now I'm terrified. I don't know what the hell's happening in there. Uh, now I think the guy's trying to get rid of evidence, like drugs or something. I don't know what's happening. So uh, sure enough, I finally, I see this door handle get fidgeted with. And the door opens. And it's uh, an employee of Sweet Kitchen, Butter, whatever, Cafe Kitchen. And uh, a little Hispanic guy, busboy, he opens the door. And when he opens the door, I'm hit with a wave of of physical nausea. I mean, like, it, it's, it smells like he was cooking. He burned Brussels sprouts in a dog carcass. Like, I mean, it is just, it was the fucking, it, it, it smells like he had been, on, he was on a shit diet. For a week of nothing but shit shakes. Oh, and now he shit them out. Like, let's put it this way. If that grandma in the dressing gown had stumbled into this bathroom, she would have called the police. <laughs> 
it, it was death incarnate. It was such a stink ghost when he opened the door. It came flying out like it, it almost it almost wailed like a banshee. Like whoa! I mean, like this horrible ghost noise. He opens the door, and again, it's it's conspicuous because there's an exit and there's people sitting there and there's people by the counter. He opens it and people outside they whip their head around. I mean, it's like that devastating. And he walks out. I'm standing right there, little Hispanic guy. He walks out. He looks at me. He makes eye contact. And then he, I swear to God, he looks at the ground and he goes, sorry, senor. <laughs> and walks away. <laughs> that's, that's what he dropped off. Like eye contact, sad face, like almost like pouty lip. Looks down at the ground. Sorry, senor. <laughs> and walks away. And I I don't even know if I want to go in the room because it was like, it was almost like this stink fist that wouldn't let me in. It was like punching me in the chest. But I had to. I had to go in. And now I got to throw up in that toilet. Oh, God. Believe me, I didn't have any problems. I walk in and I got I, so I, I, I to keep my distance and try to figure out a way to do it without uh, horrifying everybody involved. Oh, and by everybody, God. I mean me. So uh, I lean over and I, I do my business. I take care of my business. And... uh. I flush and I look in the mirror and I'm throwing water on my face to try to, you know, and the stink is so bad. I should tell you that when I walk out, it still might get pinned on me for any newcomers. <laughs> but uh, I walk out. Thankfully, nobody looks at me or sees me. And as I go to walk and meet Karen, it dawns on me. That's what I should have said last night. I had nothing to say to that old lady. Why didn't I think of just looking at her and going, sorry, senor. <laughs> that would have gotten me off the hook for all eternity. <laughs> think about it. If you burst into a bathroom, there's like a fat junkie who looks like he's sweating. He's got heroin going to his veins. And he just looks sad and looks down at the ground and goes, sorry, senor. <laughs> I think you just back out and close the door. <laughs> so mad I didn't think of it. You guys can get me at Mike and Mike Schmidt Comedy dot com. You guys can find me at Facebook dot com slash the forty year old boy. You guys can follow me at Twitter dot com slash the forty year old boy. You can follow our friend Lily von Stupp at Twitter dot com slash Lily von Stupp. You can follow her at Twitter dot com slash MNTs. And if uh, you want to write her a personal note, which I don't blame you, I mean, you've got to go ahead and reach out to her, send her some uh, important correspondence, something that she would be able to read and not have to be. Uh, sharing with the private eyes or private eyes, prying eyes. I don't know. I'm trying to talk here and it's foolish. Go ahead and write her at lily at burlesque411.com. That's lily, L-I-L-I, at burlesque411.com. Zazzle.com slash 40-year-old boy. Please buy all his stuff. I'm changing the game, man. Want to remind you folks about the Monday Night Tees every Monday night at the Three Clubs on Santa Monica and Vine. Shows at 10 o'clock p.m. Uh, I happen to be very personal friends with the producer. Her name is Lily Von Stupp. Hey, Lily. Hey, Michael. Sounds like you got a show coming up this week. I do. And I understand it's a theme show of sorts. It is. What would it be called? That 70s Ho. That 70s Ho? Come on, that's awesome. Have a little more enthusiasm for that. Who thought of that? Me. Good. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> So it's uh, a 70s-themed show, people dancing to 70s songs and all that kind of stuff. Who's hosting? Uh, Snapper and Mr. Or, I'm sorry, Red Snapper and Mr. Snapper are oh, hosting together. Oh, a couple of Snappers. Yes, and it's Red's birthday, so we'll be celebrating her birthday. Red Snapper's birthday. We have uh, Burlesque and Boylesque, which I know you love. Oh, dudes? <laughs> yeah. With a cock pasty on? Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Pasty. All right, so there's guy dancers, there's chick dancers. Well, it's the 70s, man. It's Everybody's swinging. They're grooving. Free love. You can bang a dude, bang a chick, whatever you want to do. I'm trying to get a key party going after the show. Exciting. <laughs> They've already got a nice storm in Chicago. Let's get a key party at your show. Uh, will you be in, uh, in dancing? Uh, I will not. You will just be there, though, hosting and having fun. In some lovely 70s. That's exciting. Will you go Joanne Worley on everybody? Go that kind of deal? Uh, I think it's going to be a little more disco than that. Will there. the Snappers have a small, skinny microphone a la Gene Rayburn? Maybe. Perhaps they should. Uh, so go to the three clubs on Santa Monica and Vine every Monday night at 10 o'clock p.m. this week. That's 70s ho. Come out and check it out, folks. Uh, I'm going to thank some people here. First of all, I, I always thank tweakedaudio.com slash 40, as I've mentioned uh, several times. And thank you to you folks who've gone ahead and bought any products from them. We appreciate it. This week, somebody actually bought a watch. 
uh, rather than buying, you know, because we, we have just the earbuds, but someone else went on their site and bought the watch and then wrote them and said, credit the 40-year-old boy for this watch purchase, <laughs> uh, which was awesome because then the people at Tweak did not have to do that. They could have just been sneaky, but instead they contacted me and they said, guess what? Your listener purchased a watch, and so you get uh, uh, this much money from it. And I said, fantastic. So that was awesome. great. Yeah. So thank you for buying a watch. Uh, I don't know if I should tell people that because now they think they're going to buy anything on the site and write them and go, hey, credit the 40-year-old boy for this. That's so you know what? Even better, what if somebody bought tweakedaudio.com? <laughs> they bought the whole company and went, credit the 40-year-old boy for me buying your company. Done. <laughs> Cough it up. I need a percentage. Uh, so thanks to all you people. And I want to thank people who have donated to the show. Uh, uh, I want to thank our friend Kurt N., uh, I don't know if I mentioned Kurt in the past, but he actually sent his money through the mail. Like he, he mailed something to my PO box, which was really cool for uh, donated to the show for me and Lily and uh, and David. And then I, I will also thank our friend Kurt N, who also uh, donated a second time. So let's let's don't I don't know because I don't know if I ever thanked him the first time, but I want to make sure I, I mention him again because he did a second time. And uh, it's all you know what it's it's old home week. It's people repeating. Let's thank our friend Spencer M. Uh, this was his second donation. Thank you, Spencer M. And uh, no, and uh, I I want to thank our friend Todd R. This is Todd R.'s fourth donation. Wow! Nice of Todd to do that. Uh, and I will tell you that Todd R. and uh, Chris R. are the guys who are trying to get me to Portland, and uh, working very hard behind the scenes to try to find a room. We have some possibilities. Uh, if you go to Facebook.com/slash/the forty year old boy on my page, you will see links that I will post uh, to people who want to bring me to Minneapolis. People want to bring me to Australia. They want to bring me to Ireland. They want to bring me to Austin, Texas. They want to bring me to the Ozarks. They want to bring me to Phoenix, which they are, which I'll get to in a second. They want to bring me to Portland, which we're going to soon. Uh, we should have an announcement soon on that. And uh, Austin, Ozarks. Yeah, I think I've mentioned everybody, right? Minneapolis. Uh, there's going to be a Bring Mike to Boston page, from what I understand. There's now a Bring Mike to New York page. Uh, we're trying to get me into the Fringe Festival in New York. I have to submit that in a couple of weeks, and we'll know more there. And if they say no, then maybe I'll just go to New York and play a theater. Who knows? And I just got a letter from some guy who wants me to come to Kentucky. I haven't contacted him back yet, but uh, he goes to a university there, and he's like, hey, man, you know, you, you would do well here. So who knows? We'll see. But uh, uh, all, of the, all of these pages are great. Will I ever get to these places? I have no idea. But I'm definitely coming to Phoenix. That's a definite, folks. Uh, you can go to my page and buy tickets online through Brown Paper Tickets to the Mike Schmidt One Man Show, Success is Not an Option, which is coming to Phoenix to the Space 55 Theater uh, on East Pierce Street, February 25th. That's a Friday night at 8 o'clock. Uh, I will be there and uh, staying in a hotel. I don't know why you care about that. Nobody cares. I'm still trying to put the trip together, so I'm a little weirded out about it, but I guarantee you, definitely, we've sold, uh, it's a small space, it only has 55 seats, and we've sold half the seats, awesome. like, right away, which is great, uh, So, if you, but I will tell you that they are going to sell quickly. Uh, if you guys are coming, please buy the tickets so we can go ahead and at least, uh, you know, I so I know what I'm getting into. I don't want to I don't want to show up, and it's just me and, uh, uh, you know, Josh, who brought me to town, and he's like, hey, tell me some jokes. So uh, I know at least 26 people have bought tickets. I hope that they can come out. Uh, I don't know if there will be a raging ice and snowstorm that keeps them away in Phoenix. I have no idea how that will work. Um, but uh, so there you go. We're bringing me to Phoenix February 25th. It's a Friday night at the Space 55 Theater. The link is available through Brown Paper Tickets. It'll be on Facebook.com slash the 40-year-old boy. Uh, you can go ahead and pick up tickets via there. And uh, I may put something on my website as well at uh, MikeSchmidtComedy.com, which is a website I hope you will visit. I haven't blogged in a while. I haven't rocked with a blog in a while because I was uh, laid up because of an accident that I may have mentioned. But hopefully that's going to change soon. Um, I can tell you that on that page, there's a Joe Business page. And if you go click on it, you can go ahead and purchase stuff from the Zazzle store via that page, the Joe Business page. Oh, and Zazzle store again, mugs, mouse pads, T-shirts, Hanjabaga shirt, Stripple shirt. Uh, go ahead and check that stuff out. Also, you can go and buy downloads, the year one download, the year two download, uh, the Super Angry Guy Gene Happy Good Time Yelling combo download, which is year one and year two at a discount. Go to the uh, downloads page, uh, the, the Joe Business page, and click on downloads. You can purchase the year one and year two sets. And if you just want to donate to the show, like the people I've mentioned earlier, and also like my friend Suzanne D. Suze! That's right. Suzanne D. donated to the show. She's a good friend, and uh, it was nice for her to do so. So uh, you want to do that, go to the MikeSchmidtComedy.com, any page at all, 
And in the upper left-hand corner, you will find a little Schmitty there with his pocket out. Click on him, and you can donate to the show. And uh, eventually, that will be carved up and divided between me and <laughs> the other people involved as soon as I pay my taxes and figure out how much that's going to be. Uh, I keep telling myself over and over it's not going to be a ton, but who knows what's going to happen. I have no idea. I have to get a tax appointment squared away with the uh, person involved. I want to tell you guys about BurlesqueBears.com. Don't forget about that, BurlesqueBears.com, especially with Valentine's Day is coming up. Lily Hand makes these bears for you. Send a special request. If you want a burlesque bear, go ahead and get it to her. She will make you a burlesque bear. It will get sent to you and uh, and hidden inside every burlesque bear. Don't cut it open and look, but I would just, just please know, take this knowledge. Inside of every burlesque bear is a pair of Lily's underwear. It's right in there. She tucks it. So keep it close to your heart. That's for all you Japanese businessmen who want to purchase a burlesque bear. Go ahead and buy a burlesque bear and... and uh, Put down the, uh, you know, this mark the skivvies option, and she will go ahead and jam some underwear in there for you. So go ahead and enjoy that at burleskbears.com. Uh, and am I doing comedy anywhere? Have I got anything else to plug? Oh, I yeah, I do. You know what? Let me do this because I didn't do it last week because I'm stupid. Uh, I made an appearance on a podcast called the Milk of Minutia podcast, which uh, you can actually Google Milk of Minutia. Or you can go to my Facebook page. I put a link up there. You can go to iTunes and look for Milk of Minutia. They've talked to a lot of comedians, uh, a lot of different comedians over there. I think I'm in episode 43. So the previous episodes, they talked to like a Felicia Michaels. A lot of people you don't get to hear on a lot of podcasts. People like that. Uh, so uh, they were really nice to me. I, I appreciated the fact it was Ken and Justin. I, at one point, however, Justin left. Like in the middle of the interview, I will tell. Let me warn you about a few things. All right, I enjoyed it. I had a really good time, and I can't believe these guys took the time to, to talk to me for as long as they did. Um, but it deterred off into about, I don't know how long, of mixed martial arts and wrestling talk. I don't know if that <laughs> made the final broadcast to the point where I actually asked them even on the air. And I will tell you, I don't even know what's on the air with these guys because they started talking to me and we're talking. And then I think we're off the air. And then finally I go, are we going to start at any time? And they go, oh, well, we started. And I go, wait, dude, because I've heard their show. I listen to their show, and they do a thing in the beginning where they'll go, uh, Felicia Michaels is a very funny comedian. You may know her from Star Search. You may know her from, the, ladies and gentlemen, Felicia Michaels. And she goes, hey, how are you? And then they start talking. They didn't do that for me. They just started talking to me, and I was like, when are they going to start with the intro? And he goes, oh, we do that afterwards. And then we, you know, we kind of stitch it all together. I'm like, dudes, you can't do that to a guy. That's like just like a fucking oral bear trap I just walked into. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. And all, all of a sudden, I'm talking about how much I hate the Jews. And the next thing you know, they're asking me about comedy. It's like, oh, Christ. Really? You're going to cut that part out, right? So, uh, so yeah, sure enough, they, they go ahead and... Uh, believe me, who, take, who doesn't take that sound bite out of my show now? He hates the Jews. Um, so, uh, sure, they, so we talked forever. Then we started talking about UFC and mixed martial arts and uh, strike force and Japan. And then we started talking about wrestling. And I started talking about being a kid and loving the Road Warriors. And, and I mean, I mean, an hour went by. It had to be. I don't know how long it was to the point where I actually said, you're not going to have any of this in this fucking show, right? I mean, you've got to cut out all this wrestling nonsense. And he's like, yeah, because the thing is, they hosted a wrestling podcast before. So when they started asking me about it, forget about it. I don't, you know, I don't talk to anybody about it because I'm not a nerd anymore. <laughs> So, uh, but then you start, all, all you got to do is just poke and prod me. And all of a sudden I'm 13 years old again, talking about suplexes for Christ's sake. And uh, I, I talk forever, kind of like I'm doing now. Fuck. But uh, I, so I just warn you ahead of time. It's one of those Skype phone ones where, you know, I'm talking and then another guy's talking. There's like a second and a half beat. And then all of a sudden there was this guy, Justin, and I, I alluded to Justin and he was gone. He left the interview, just took off, just gone in the middle of it. Just decided he was tired of me and my nonsense and split. So me and Ken talked for a while, and then Justin showed back up, and he just kind of like, yeah, I know. Like, he tried to fake it, like he'd been there the whole time. We're like, dude, we know you weren't, we know you split. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, I had to go. Yeah, of course you did, Justin. I'm not going to pull the wool over my eyes. So go listen to the Milk Minutia podcast and, and pray that they cut out the wrestling stuff. I have no idea how much of it made it into the final cut. Uh, so, and, and... There you go. That's that plug. I, I think I'm plugged out. Uh, the plug. God, that's a lot of plugs. Jesus Christ. Oh, man. I, uh, now I'm going to go home and I'm going to eat. Yes, that's right, folks. I'm still eating. <laughs> it's so sad. Like, Because fo food, food and drugs are the same thing. I don't give a fuck. I, if I hear anybody who's like, hooked on drugs, I can't judge them, man, because I'm the same way with food. And everybody's like, you know, fat people are like, well, you need food to stay alive. Yeah, but you don't need that much food to stay alive, all right? You can eat a quinoa salad, you fuck. You don't need to have fucking nine short rib sliders. Jesus Christ. Terrible. I, I just read a story because I want you want to judge. I read a story in South Africa, dude. All right, look, we can all agree none of us wants to go to South Africa, correct? <laughs> I don't know how many listeners I have there. I don't know. I just and, and they've had such a problem with the prawns. All right, so that's terrible. 
Uh, so I don't know if that's still going on over there, and they have the, you know, everybody segregated in the spaceship. Uh, District 9, forget it. Nobody cares. All right, fine. <laughs> um, but I read a story that, uh, and it's just this kind of shit happened. Look, in America, we're bad with drugs, all right? We, we have terrible problems. We got guys buying cold medicine and making meth in trailers in Kentucky, and that's why they want to bring me there, quite frankly, I think. Um, you know, all that shit's going on, and I understand it. Everybody, you got to keep, it's so bad, you got to keep the Sudafed behind the counter now, all right? That's how terrible it is in this country. But... We're still not South Africa. I just read a story. You know what they get high on in South Africa now? HIV drugs. What? The, I swear to God, I read a story yesterday about a product, and the street name for it is Wunga. And I'm not shitting you. This is a totally fucking true story. They, they take HIV medication, and they crush it up, and they mix it with rat poison, detergent, and marijuana. And they smoke it. And they get high. And their breath kills rats, which is really, quite frankly, what you're looking for in a, in a high. You want a high that gets you so high that you can kill vermin when you breathe. Holy shit, that's what you want. But I, I don't even understand. They, and they talk to this guy, and he's like fucking wired out of his mind. He's got And he's got a joint of Wunga. And they uh, he goes, yeah, he goes, I don't have a job. He goes, I just, I rob people and I buy Wunga. That's what I do. <laughs> that guy, you don't want to talk. You don't want to meet that guy. You're not going to have any conversations with that guy. The Wunga guy? And then, then they have a chick, and she goes, I sell my body for Wunga. I don't care. I just do it. It's just I have to have the Wunga. And, uh, and they, they said the guys sell it for $5 a packet in their little in these little powder packets, but they dump the whole packet in a joint and smoke it. These guys are spending 160 bucks a day on Wunga. And I just, but, I mean, dude, fucking HIV, who, all right, here's what happened. They were smoking marijuana, and they were like, well, I'm high, but I'm not high enough. What, what can we put in here? You got any Tide? So they get the Tide. <laughs> I don't know why they made that leap, but they get the Tide. They sprinkle Tide in the fucking joint. They're like, that's not bad, but Jesus, we gotta need, we need something there to take the edge off. Absolutely rat poison. Let's go ahead and get some rat poison and put it right inside the Wunga. Actually, it's not Wunga at that point. Then it's just marijuana, rat poison, and detergent. That's all they... We don't have a fancy name for it. They're like, fuck, we got no name for this. And, and quite frankly, they were tired of calling it rat poison, marijuana, and detergent because it kept reminding them what the fuck they were getting high on. They were like, shit, we need a classy name, but still, we need one more ingredient to really put this over the edge. I know. Doesn't your aunt still have AIDS? <laughs> Why don't we take some of her medicine and crush it up and put it in here? They lit it up, took a hit, and went, Wunga! Boom! <laughs> There's your name, they're fucking high, and they don't have to call it rat poison anymore. Holy shit. But the thing is, I can't judge that, because all that is, is a bacon avocado double cheeseburger of drugs. <laughs> Seriously. Because you, you had a hamburger and it was fine. And then he went, you know what, I gotta put some fucking cheese on there. Let's lay some cheese on top. And then he went, fuck, I need bacon. Of course we need bacon. And you went and had bacon on it. You went, there's one more thing. Oh, avocado? Wonga! That's a fucking Wonga burger, goddammit! <laughs> So I can't judge a junkie. A junkie's just a fat guy with a needle. That's all he is, for Christ's sake. A junkie's just a fat guy who, granted, makes the leap into rat poison. I mean, I, I don't think a fat guy's going to do that. Quite frankly, a fat guy should do that. You know what? Fat guy should make the leap into fucking HIV medication and rat poison because then he vomits all over the place. He's not a fat guy that much longer. Holy shit, fat guy. If he makes a Wunga burger with loses the avocado and puts rat poison on there, he does a favor for all of fucking society. That's right, fat guy. Then you know what? Cut loose the bacon and go with a little more rat poison in your food. That's what you need, fat guy. Because then everybody... random bullshit that nobody fucking cares about. I am I am peddling obscenity. I am going to get a whole fucking army of you people, and you know what we're going to do? We're going to listen to me and then do nothing for an entire fucking week. I can't be trusted. Don't you people know this? 
It was like a back to the future of suck. I don't want to have a phone in somebody else's pants. I need to shoot up heroin and jog. <laughs> hey, ass fuck, are you listening to anything that I'm saying to you? Fuck, somebody's got to shut that old guy up. And I'm like, fuck you! I'm not a potato! I'm a goddamn cantaloupe! Hi Mike, hi Mike, hi Mike, hi Mike, hi Mike, hi Mike.